Hello? 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 Can people hear us? Are we alive? It's only 20, 20 of them. Okay. I don't know. I think so, yeah. I didn't look. It's a cool night. Yeah, trying to finish this because I actually want to finish it. Yeah, but then your portfolio, you fucking loser. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to uh, Playground Bullies. <laughs> Dave Raposa edition. He's gonna call me a faggot and stuff and steal my lunch money. It's gonna be really good. Yeah. He's gonna slowly push me up against a brick wall, asking me if I like what I'm painting, and then he's gonna start touching me. Alright, pussy on your balls. <laughs> if anyone doesn't know, that's a reference to the Brotherhood 4. Yeah. A story about an all boys school where some shenanigans happen, including rape in the bathroom. Yeah, you're right, it's pussy on them. It's good to be back. Talking about the Brotherhood 4. It's a good, it's a good show. It really is. You can go find it on uh, yubtub.com. The new kid comes and saves him. Spoiler alert. And he's dreamy looking. <sighs> so what's up? Nothing. Just working on the Stargirl stuff. Oh yeah. Right. I liked the uh, the animations in the last one you put up. Thanks. I thought I was going to get a seizure from the first panel. <laughs> I was like, oh, those flashy orbs. Oh my god. <laughs> it's so flashy. Yeah. That's what I want. Yeah. I want to have the first comic where somebody dies from a seizure. I yeah. hope that happens. Can you imagine that? That'd be great if that was your legacy. I got in trouble. I get I get sued. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Put a warning on it. Whew, that'd be good. Kind of hope that happens now. Might have to stage that now. <laughs> Just want to see you go to jail for that reason. I don't think I'd go to jail for it. You might get involuntary manslaughter. I don't know. Uh, My dad's got a great lawyer. I'm sure I can put you away. Voluntary manslaughter. <laughs> <laughs> that should be the. That should be what it is. Voluntary manslaughter. Not murder. I'd like to think that in some future. I could commit suicide and they'd call it voluntary manslaughter because everybody wanted me gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's only suicide if people miss you. That's true. <laughs> it's only suicide if people miss you. I want that to be the case my lawyer makes. <laughs> Why is this even in court? He didn't want it to be called suicide. He wanted it to be voluntary manslaughter. <laughs> it's only suicide if somebody misses you on my tombstone. Uh, I would love that. Remember that grave we saw in Plymouth that was just a thumbs up? Yeah, this is my favorite grave ever. I talk about that all the time. It's really whenever, weird. Whenever I hear somebody talking about what grave they want or something like that, I always think about the grave with the thumbs up on it. Yeah, that was like genius. Like what, a, what a message to leave to the world. Like, like a thumbs up with an explosion around it. <laughs> That's what it was. It had like yeah, a, it had like a sunburst like, around it or something. Yeah. It was really good. Mm -hmm. So are you excited for the Goonies too? All gooned up? All grown up? I don't you know. The grownies? Yeah, the grownies. <laughs> a bunch of grown men? Yeah. They hang out together. Exactly. Like they don't have kids or anything. <laughs> it's going to be them at a diner. Remember that time we found a pirate? It's going to be really quiet. I'm pretty sure the, the Goonies Part 2 should just be it. Yeah, it really should, actually. It's referring, to, back together, remember what happened. referring to the Stephen King novel, guys. Yeah. <sighs> I want him to sit down and go, Listen, son, I used to goon with the best of them. But i got to protect you. You're my boy. You can't go exploring caves. How are you liking it? Oh, uh, it's really, really good. Yeah. It's it's one of those things where you feel like you know all the characters or you've met some version of them in real life. Yeah. 
And it's extra weird because I uh, live in Boston, and he mentions all the towns that are around here. Like, one of the characters has a whole chapter in Logan Airport. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, weirdly specific. But, uh, yeah, it's been really good. It's always weird when, in his books, he mentions, like, highways and stuff that you know. Yeah, when he's like, I got on 95 and I drove up to Bangor, and I'm like, I've done that. <laughs> I don't yeah, like that. So much things. Like, uh, he I'm mentioned right like road. a uh, like a real road stop. Yeah. And that was like, oh, I've been to that road stop. Okay. Yeah, like uh, I'm I'm like right at the end of uh, Doctor Sleep. Like I'm like, I I think I have like there's only like a handful of pages left, but yeah. Um, so much of it's in like New Hampshire. Oh really? Yeah, like, and I just know like all of it and the other side of that is that so much of it's in new hampshire and then so much of it's in colorado what parts of it are in new hampshire like what parts of new hampshire are there um there's a ton of them there's uh i didn't know that now i have to read it yeah like it's it's so accurate oh wow i'll I'll look it up dr sleep that's cool it's cool that it's in colorado too that's weirdly specific Yeah. For those of you who don't know, Dave lived in New Hampshire for a long time, and now he lives in Colorado. So that's why it's weird. It's good, though. That book's really good. It has some, like, super satisfying parts. I gotta read The Shining first. Yeah. Gotta do that. How long is The Shining? Is it one of his like super novels? It um, takes like a whole fucking year to read. I can't remember. I'll tell you in a second. No, it's only four. It's like four hundred fifty pages. Oh, okay, good. That's doable. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. What's up? Just like looking over at Skype and just messages from Carl. Just say gay, sorry fag, pussy. Like what? <laughs> none of these none of these things. Is like, it together g- and I haven't said anything? Is it Dobsky or Kapinski? Oh god. <laughs> That's perfect. I keep feeling really weird. I gotta like send Steph a message. Yeah, why don't you? I'm going to tonight, I think. Because they keep sending me his work, and they're like, can you alter this? And I'm like, I don't feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel good. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Like, I feel really weird about it. Like, please try to match his style. And I'm like, it's... If anything could be more opposite to my style, it's his. Yeah. So I'm like, okay... <laughs> I'll try. I really like the stuff that you had, uh, that you showed me of his, like... Yeah. He gets a lot of energy in that painter style. He really does. Like, the way the characters are posed and stuff. He's really good at, uh, painting crow men. He really is. If anyone can make a crow man look good, it's Stefan Kopinski. So, if anyone needs some crow men done, you give him a call. Seriously. Those are quality crumbs. I'm being completely serious. He can take something like a... Like those old D&D monsters where, like, you know... Should be kind of lame. But he can make them completely convincing. And you're like, oh. Oh. I guess that is a dangerous monster. I guess I, sh- <laughs> guess I should watch out. I guess that is a dangerous monster. <laughs> <sighs> it's monsters. <laughs> I know, we should recruit him for that. I already told him about it. Oh, okay, good. Does he want to? It's like, do you want to do this? And I said, it's going to be awesome. And you said that he was 100% in. Alright, good. Because he's perfect for it. Hey man, Carl said they were in. Good. It's going to be the best thing. 
are you are you like me like where when you like you know how me and you when we wrote we wrote in like a notebook and stuff yeah when I write now I just write on scraps of paper yep me too I've got a whole pile on the side of my desk with the paperweight on it just the idea pile okay because like I kind of want to take a picture of my desk it looks like just insane no I've got my uh my little Beethoven head and underneath it is about 600 scraps of paper that are either conversations we've had, ideas, sketches for paintings that I don't have time to do, uh, just everything, everything. It's terrible. Yeah. I'm like, like I've been planning out that comic, and like I, I write out like all the ideas. Yeah. And they're all over the place. I have to keep looking through everything to find where the ideas start and end. Yeah, I hate it. Like this is the worst system ever. But like I don't know. Like I can't just write in a notebook. It just it doesn't work. I can't think like that. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it has to be random. Yeah, I know what you mean. I hate that. I wish it could be more organized. There's, like, boys from New York lines. <laughs> little comp sketches. Uh, it's just tons of stuff. You gotta put that second one up. I forgot you even had it. I'll bring the laptop over here while I'm talking to you and I'll look at it. <laughs> yes, yeah, please, it. please do exactly that. Hold on a second. This is exciting. Alright, let's see. Let's see where this thing is. Let's see if it's good enough to put up. It is, no matter what. Good enough. It's ready. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> it doesn't need to be good enough. All right, where is it? Let's take a look at this. <laughs> I like using like the editing software and stuff. Yeah. And then editing the voice for New York. Well, yeah. It's going to change the world. I know it is. I don't it. <laughs> okay. Hopefully I can find it. Let me know if you need help thinking of keywords to search for. Yeah, I, I can't remember. Dex, Trace, Manx, Hacks, Boys. <laughs> Damn, Dad. There you go. Isn't that the video you made where Wait, people that. thought I people thought I was actually dead? <laughs> yeah, that's that one. <laughs> Still amazing. Uh, waking no, up buddy. waking up to people calling me on my phone. Yeah. I just had to see if you were okay. Like what? <laughs> Seriously. I just love that that's who I am. Yeah. That I would do that. Like I would really Upload a video to. I know. How can this be love, or why can't this be love? Yeah, why can't this be love? I'm I'm counting on it. <laughs> I know you're that person, and I I need you to be that person. Why can't this be love? Like, why would I do that? <laughs> it's like when somebody who sucks dies, and everybody's suddenly sad, and they're like, "He was a great person." It's like, no, he wasn't. Two days ago, you thought he sucked. I need I need you to be the counterbalance to my funeral. <laughs> like guys, he really wasn't that great. He doesn't have to play it up. Calm down, everybody. He's gone. We don't need to pretend anymore. We're all free. <laughs> We're all free. <laughs> yeah, I really want us all to be free. Yeah. 
go, guys, we did it. We did it, he's gone. That's why I played this. <laughs> when you're dead. Is that Ghostbusters too? Yeah. Yeah. When does it kick it? I guess we're gonna have to pick a friend. Should man. You totally should. I want you to do that. Did you give in and buy Dark Souls yet? No. Good. Strong individual. I can't do it. Like, there's just too much stuff. Yeah. It, like, days have become useless. Be strong. I, like, there's not enough time. <sighs> it's still weird that, like, the second my work was over, I started waking up at 7 every day. Or earlier. What do you mean, like, you were finally free or something? Yeah, it was really strange. It was like I was in some weird fog, and like the second the work was over, I started having a normal schedule again. Mm. Just instantly. Man, I am trying to find these files. Yeah, man, hurry up. Prayer. Where is all the boards? It's not in like your recently opened thing if you go into like the drop down menu. No, I've done too many things. Oh, you're still using that laptop? Yeah. Oh, okay. And I don't even know what this thing is doing. Uh, try. Can you search by the file type? What is it, like an AVI or something? Uh, they're like. BEG files or something? Search by that. Yeah, I was. I couldn't find it. I really wanted to be able to possibly share some cool videos, you know? I think that's all you could ever hope for. Yeah, like so many cool videos I've worked on. I don't know where it is. All I Try BF, try BFNY. I know. I know that's one of them. Maybe it's on an external hard drive or something and I unplugged it. I don't know. Try splicers. <laughs> then try splicers too. <laughs> then try splicers too. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> Tell you something once. What? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Sorry. And it automatically opened for Rocky speech. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, if you can't find it by the file type, then it must not be on that. Did you ever export it as, like, a video? Or was it still just, like, in, in the works? Um, and I don't think I ever sent you anything of it, did I? No. I think I saw him going down the stairs, but I don't think it was like a video. I think he just sent me a GIF. Is Max Modem in this one?
Oh, I know what happened. What? Don't even tell me it's gone. It's not gone. Okay. I just moved the, um, I forgot that the editing program takes all of the, uh, takes all of the files and, like, links them from um, wherever they're at in the, uh, in the computer. So, like, I think that they were all, um, they were all in a certain place. They were like all in this one um, file on my computer, and then I moved them into a different folder, so it doesn't know where they are. Oh. So I gotta take them out of that folder. You'll find a way. There it is. Okay. I'll tell you if it works. Please. Please, God. Please. <laughs> Here it is. You found it? Yeah. All right, good. Now, put a song in there. Get it on YouTube. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Is it done? <laughs> I got muted the music on it. I didn't see Captain America 2 yet, but Dave did. It's good. Yeah, I'm sure it's good. I just don't want to go see Captain America alone. <laughs> There's that song. good is it? Oh, it's the worst. That's great. I'm going to take a video of it with the phone. Ooh, please do. And then send it to Please do. I really want to see it. Sorry, guys. You're going to have to listen to that again. song goes up a key. Should I send it to your email? No, I just send it to my phone. Right. Wasn't sure if you wanted to preview it on here. Oh yeah, sure. Send it to my email. I didn't even think of that. Give people a glimpse of what's to come. Yeah. People haven't seen the boys in a while. <laughs> Stupidest statement. I know. It's a Daniel Warren eighty six. Yeah. How does your how does your Gmail not have that saved by now? For some reason it's not saved in the phone. Oh, uh, weird. It's probably because we're not friends. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really send emails on the phone. They do the worst thing ever. So do you have any advice for how to reach a wider gay audience so I can give that guy some help tonight? Yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, <laughs> yesterday when I was walking out of my car and coming back into my apartment, a guy who uh, lives down the street stopped me and he said, are you good with the internet? 
And I said, what do you mean? And he said, how do I reach a wider gay audience? And then he said, hey, guys are used Google Plus. <sighs> Not attracted to you at all. And then I got trapped in a conversation with a guy that assumed I just knew what the gay community wanted. <sighs> I, I always assumed that you just knew. Of course. I don't know. If you guys use Google Plus. The greatest pickup line. If you got the email, you should put it up on the screen and I can watch it with you. Um. But thank God I just restored all the files. So I got all the editing stuff ready. Alright. Boys from New York time. <laughs> Make that big. Boys from New York time. This isn't with this is without all like the black borders and stuff. Some of them don't have it. <laughs> this is difficult. <laughs> so hard to hold it down. Ah, the girls. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Who was that? His frag J thirty seven. Yeah. Nice. Do you like the walking out of the club? Yeah, I do. It's the most insane. The hell just happened? So insane how bad that looks. It's the best thing in the world. So once I watched that video, the green capture thing showed up on my screen. How do I get rid of those? I don't know. Oh, that's fucking... Okay. <laughs> just... I've never seen it. Alright. I guess they're gone again. Or they're not gone. Wow. Okay. This sucks. But you like yeah. that one? Yeah, that was amazing. Man. So close to introducing Max Modem and his robot companion. <laughs> yeah, Max Modem's my favorite. Huh. Those stupid glasses. Do you have those or do I have them? Uh, like. Those like glasses? Yeah, those like massage goggles. There you go. Okay, I thought so. Yeah, you left them in my apartment. Yeah. I decided I would never tell you that I still have them. It's okay, I still have your diving helmet. It's true. And everything you left at Nelly's. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that one. I love this video. That's a good I one. I can't believe everybody thought you were dead. I can't believe they called me. <laughs> oh. I like that they called me because they knew that if I was dead, you would do it. <laughs> they were like, well, this is something Dave would do. So I better call and see if Tan's actually dead. 1986 through 2011. I liked your mom's one. What? It's your just a real response to it. Oh. Yeah. I was like, oh, right. <laughs> this is what it would look like if your son died. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Say it again. It's fine. She saw me disappear when I was four once. Really? Yeah. I told you about that. What do you mean? You like drowned? When I was like walking around in the shallow water and then I stepped in a sinkhole and I just disappeared <laughs> and I didn't know how to swim yet and I just wasn't there and they, I just was not there my aunt ran into the lake trying to find where I was and had to pull me out and I was like drowning so cool pretty great it would have been really cool if you died then it really would have been <laughs> would have been fucking awesome <laughs> That house on Shaw Road would have been where the boy drowned. <laughs> would have changed everything. Would have 
would have changed everything. Yeah. Would have been titled thing to say. And then you, well, I was going to turn it into something, but I guess you can just stop me there and make it, <laughs> make it sound like I'm an asshole. What I was going to say to finish out the It Was Going to Change Everything was that maybe you would show up with a cowboy and save my life, and then later I'd write a story about it. It's possible. And then it would be My Dark Tower. <laughs> yeah, I played a lot of Dark Souls too. Dave hasn't gotten it yet, which is good. I hope he doesn't, because it's uh, way too good. It's a, it's a time sink. Yeah, you put 80 hours into it. I didn't even realize I put 80 hours into it. I was talking to James Zapata, and he was like, oh, I just beat the game, I'm level 110. And I was like, what level am I? Oh, I'm, I'm level 200? What's my game time? 75 hours. Oh. Oh. The, oh, man. the art direction in that game is so good. So good. I'll play it eventually. It's just... It's not worth it yet. This isn't a spoiler, but... I don't know if anyone in here has been playing it, but there's something so satisfying about seeing a game that's played completely straight, completely serious, with no, like, jokes, and having a fully armored knight talk to a rat that just has a voice that goes, Hello there, human. <laughs> it's like the, the best thing. Why have you come to my domain? And it's just a big rat. Just a big, real rat. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love it. You know what I love? I love when games have tongue-in-cheek senses of humor. <laughs> and they poke fun at the medium while also making some great gameplay. That's, That's why... I Far Cry Blood Dragon was the greatest game of 2013. Oh, yeah. When you remember that, when you're scared to go all the way, joke around about it. The reason I like all the movies that it was referencing is because when they made those movies, they were comedies. It, <laughs> it would have sucked if they were just trying to make a serious movie, and in retrospect, we thought it was funny. But at the time, the directors were making comedies. So it's really appropriate to make a comedy game. <laughs> and, uh, like, just swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. Great soundtrack, though. Everything else sucked. That's a great sentence, Nick Tyler Doyle. What do you say? Rat King was dope. That is a good sentence. <laughs> Oh, did you see the picture of Carver I sent you last night? Yeah, I did. That's that was gross. something, right? I hated it. It's one of those pictures that looks back at you. It's one of the seeing stones. Yeah. It's like those HBO shows where they're like, everybody knows. I don't know, why does say HBO? <laughs> it's one of those History Channel shows where the guy's like, well, everybody knows the barn's haunted by the slaves that died out there. And it shows the black and white photo, and you're like, ooh. <laughs> ooh that's, a, that's a creepy photo. Those are definitely orbs. Uh oh. Someone's outside laughing. Who's here? <laughs> it's a ghost. Who is it? It's that guy. He's loving it. It's just like... <laughs> <laughs> Look at him squirm. No, yeah, really, though, there is something incredibly satisfying about just having a giant rat talk to you in, like, a serious voice and not have it be a joke at all. Yeah. Nobody, nobody like... Plays it straight anymore, ever. Yeah, I love so it. It's good. I love it so much. Like things can just be ridiculous. It's the best thing. Yeah, you can uh, you can become one of the rats. It's like the best thing. 
You can just join the rats and become a rat. There's like a big sewer full of traps, and uh, you can uh, pull people into your world as a rat if they're down there. Mm. And then all the rats team up with you. There's like hundreds of them, and you can just kill people That's and be one of the rats. I like rats. Man. One of the rats. Greedy wants us to talk about the Ninja Turtles movie. What's the point? I know. I mean, we, like we, we could. Told. It's like, you already know everything we're going to say. It's like they just laid it all down on the table. Like, when they put the trailer out, they're just like, here it is, you know what? Whatever. I mean, the I like, everything that happened with that movie I was expecting, except them having lips. Yeah. You know, it was the a, lips threw me at once. It was exactly the Michael Bay movie I was expecting. Shredder's a white guy, the Foot Clan's like a paramilitary organization. Blah, 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 blah. But nothing could have prepared me for them having wet human lips. <laughs> like, nothing in the entire world could have made me see that coming. Like, yeah. what a decision. If there's anything that needed to be added to the Ninja Turtles, it was lips. Yeah, I really don't get that decision at all. Like, at all. They're not lips and huge chiclet teeth. <laughs> Even the chiclet teeth is like, okay, the lips though. I'm just making the combination. Yeah, the two together is something. But yeah, those like wet human lips on like a reptile mm -hmm. face. I don't know. It's just really bad. Like even in that horrible like lizard design for Spider-Man, he didn't have human lips. Like, that was a bad design. Oh, that lizard design. It's hard to remember. You mean the Goombas from the Mario Brothers movie? Yeah. That more agile Goomba. Yeah. It's like the worst. The worst. Of... I just like that the plot of that movie was he wants to turn everybody else into lizards because he has so much fun being one. <laughs> really good. I'm so crazy. I want to make everybody a lizard. No. I'm trying to figure out if uh, Craven's in the new movie. I think bad, he's in the game for the movie. I think the last one has like a bunch of characters in it though. Oh boy. I just want to see how the hell they're going to put Craven in a Dark Knight universe. Aside from the obvious, he's like some international assassin with like cyborg armor. Mm. Skull and Shark. Skull and Shark is done. Me and Dan wrapped it up and we're just keeping it. Yeah. Boom. Waiting for a rainy day. Yeah. Waiting for a rainy day. I was listening to Toto's Africa. Yeah. That's a hard song to get through. Yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, so, um, I guess I'll preface this with I don't care about uh, anything they do except Batman because it's the only thing I liked when I was a kid, but uh, that horrible Superman movie, sure. you know, with, like, the dick chips. Yeah, the dick chips. I mean, like, don't come over that, because that's my favorite part of the whole movie. Yeah, the dildo uh, prison that they put everybody in. But anyway, so they're making uh, they're making the Batman vs. Superman sequel, obviously. So uh, I found out yesterday that uh, that, what's his name, Cyborg? The robot dude? What? Isn't there, like, a robot dude who's, like, part of the DC team? He's, like, mm -hmm. a big black guy with a robot suit. You're talking about that guy from like the, the um, Teen Titans. I don't know if he's from Teen Titans or what, because I don't I don't know anything about DC stuff. I just know he's like a big black dude with a cyborg suit, but he's gonna be in the Batman vs Superman movie. Sure. Yes. I thought I saw something from him being in like the uh, the TV show or something. Uh, pretty sure. 
Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know anything about it. I remember seeing a little screenshot or something. No, yeah, he's in it. Um. So how ridiculously bad is this movie going to be if there's Batman, Superman, and a giant cyborg robot? Who makes these decisions? I don't know. Like, just get Steven Spielberg to make me a Shazam movie, please. Yeah, I know. For God's just sake. give me that movie. For God's sake. Or, or okay, Steven Spielberg and J.J. Abrams making a Super 8-style Shazam movie. Yeah, it's got to feel like the Goonies. Like, please give me that. I want that. It's got to feel like a small-town group of kids. Man, yeah, I'd pay to see that. Yeah, like a 50s story with, like, Shazam. I was talking about Shazam last night. He's the best. I was talking about how characters like Shazam only work if you hire Alex Ross because he understands that they're supposed to be lame. You just make it as real as possible and don't change anything, and it's cool. It's okay to be lame as long as you respect it. Yeah. I know, I love, uh, not trying to, like, shit on anyone, but, I mean, I know there's, like, art directors telling them to do it and all this shit, but... Yeah, but who cares? Shit on everybody. No, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I know it's not the artist's decision, it's the art director's and the company's decision, so it's not the people, but every time I see them take a character like Shazam or, like, Green Arrow and try to, like, make them badass and cool and updated with, like, cyborg suits and, like, bio armor and, like... Oh man, does it look fucking stupid. Because no matter what, he's going to have a giant lightning bolt. A giant cartoon Power Rangers lightning bolt on his chest, so why bother? Well, it's the same thing as, as doing the... It's the same exact thing as doing Blood Dragon. It's like you're not confident enough to pull it off straight, so exactly. you have to make it a joke. So you have to make it a joke. And it's like in the same way you're doing that with these characters. You're like, they can't just be what they are. I have to make them super lame now for some reason. Like, why? I know, it's like, if the, char- if, the, if the character's popular enough to merit a video game or a movie, then they're popular enough to get it based on what they are. You don't have to change them after they've already merited the project. Yeah, it's like That's the thing takes... I don't get, is like, we've got this popular character, he's popular enough that we're going to make a game. Why does that suddenly mean he's not popular enough, so let's make him cooler, which makes him lamer? Like, I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, I never understand it. It I makes mean, no sense to me. Like, that one picture of Shazam, or Captain Marvel, like when he's, like the one that Alex Ross did, where he's wearing like the gold boots, and like the sash, and the lightning bolt, and the white cape. I like, was looking at that literally last night. I have it saved in my conversations, because it was literally last night. I'm just going like, to grab it. Yeah, his fists on his uh, hips. Like, that's what he should look like. Like, classic... Oh, Here it is. So good. It's in the chat. This is all he needs to be. Because that would also be terrifying in the right context. <laughs> yes, it would. It'd be amazing. Like, like if, imagine a little boy turning into that and then beating a man to death. Like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> ah. Man. I'd pay to see that. <laughs> I'd pay to see it too. Mm. It's so good. It's so good. I love that. Love that painting. His fucking, like, I don't even know what that is, like, matador cape. It's the shit, man. I, like, want to do a Shazam comic. Like, do it. Do it with your animated GIF stuff. Because then when he transforms, you can do all the lightning and all the flashing and stuff. Yeah. Like, I wish they didn't take so much time. Yeah. You're getting them out pretty quick, though. It's it's so much work, though. Like each like it doesn't look like it, but each one of those is at least like two and a half to three comic pages of a normal comic. Right. So it's like I'm doing like all the colors, I'm doing all the animation, everything, the lines, and then the story stuff, and I'm doing them all in like a couple of days. It's, it's so much work. Just well, when it's long like that, it doesn't look like that much work. Just shut up. Just just shut up. Save Shazam. I know. 
Shazam. Just reclaim Shazam. Like, if I, if I just did a burglar story with, like, them, like, hurting his mom or something, and it's the first time he turns into Shazam. Yeah. <laughs> He's so easy. Man. Yeah, I don't care. I know his name's Captain Marvel, but Shazam is a way better name. Oh, yeah, Shazam the shit. Shazam's what they should have called him. Dave, have you thought of adding music and sound to go with the comic strips? No, just because that's like the equivalent of like when you hear the start of a song that you like and then the singer starts, you could so easily ruin it. Yeah. It's like I don't want to ruin it for anybody. Like they can fill in whatever they want for that stuff. Unless there's like, you know, something more significant after that than like, like, like the Skull and Shark trailer and stuff. Like that's different. Yeah. And then, like, the soundtrack for that can, like, you know, you don't need the comic for it. It's good on its own. <laughs> I hate that thing you just posted. What? That Black Adam. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> oh, God, I hate that. Looks so stupid. I like that it's, like, Oh man, it's so like, not a pose. Like when people edit pictures that shouldn't be like considered. I know. <laughs> like it's not like a, there's no mood. It's, it's, that, that, it's, that, okay. it's that person we all know who's unintentionally the funnest, like the funniest person we know. Yeah. They're just so entertaining, but they don't, they don't mean any of it. <laughs> trying to make a cool poster for a character they love and it's just like the best joke I've seen in so long oh, it's really funny when like stuff like that comes out and it's missing the point of like why people like those things and you see the inevitable BuzzFeed list that's like 29 posters that could be good enough for an actual movie and it's like none of these are good <laughs> what are you fucking talking about <laughs> Jesus yeah. 32 funny. sequels that need to be made and it's like none of these need to be made. Like what's wrong with you? It's because somebody just, <laughs> just writes things. Somebody just yeah. had to get an article out that day. Yeah, exactly. They don't care. Huh. So they're filming the new Star Wars movie. Really? Started filming? Yep. Wow. Um, as long as they focus primarily on the expanded universe. I mean, if J.J. Abrams doesn't bring in the Heir to the Empire storyline of the novelization, then, I mean, I'm out. <laughs> I need there to be <laughs> Blue Skin Commander Man, whatever his name is, I can't remember Blue skin what? I call them blue skin commander man. I don't know his real name though. Who? It's like Thule or something. <laughs> oh, right. Even I don't really know what you're talking about, but I think I do. I like how I can make up a name like Thule, and it's definitely a Star Wars character. Well, I think I think John Foster did a painting of the guy you're talking about, and I was like, "What's Thule?" Like it sounds familiar. Okay, Star Wars. I don't know. Thrawn? Please tell me that's a real Star Wars name. That's his name. Thrawn. Is it really Thrawn? I'm pretty sure that's it's a Thrawn. Pretty yeah. good name. That's the guy I'm thinking of. That's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Ron. I gotta go look it up. You really do. You really gotta look at pictures of them. Are you... Wait a minute. No, no, no. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut up. This is his name? Yeah. No, look. 
I couldn't even make up a name that shit. Mithra Nuruodo. That's called I'm a fan of Star Wars and I don't know what's good, so I made up this name. I put a link in the chat. Mithra Nuruodo. It's because it's the fucking worst. That's like those kids that read Tolkien in like fifth grade and they're like, I'm gonna make up a ranger. <laughs> Exactly. It's based on nothing. I'm going to make up my own language, except whereas Tolkien was a linguist, I'm just going to say things that are sounds. Yeah, like, I'm just going to make some shit up. <laughs> like, people never understand that. It's like, you don't know. You have to base stuff off real things, or it doesn't work. So please tell me that, please tell me that 75-year-old Mark Hamill is going to fight Nightcrawler. <laughs> That's all this looks like to me. I can't. It's so bad. Oh, wow, that shit. Like, uh, what's his face? Like, like I love books, like fantasy books, mm-hmm. where they're obviously written by those fan people you're talking about. Who like, yeah, they're just fans. For whatever reason, they got to a point where they could show you stuff. Like, they're just fans of some other person. They don't understand why the thing worked. The thing that they like, they don't understand it. Right. It's like it's like they never read where that person got their ideas from or their influences or like what it's based in. All right. they ever did was live in that thing. Right. It's like they live in the Lord of the Rings. They don't understand what the Lord of the Rings comes from. Yeah, none of the allegory. You know, um, like they don't know what it is that it's based. Right. Level. Like they just <laughs> they're just like Oh, that's how you make up fantasy names. Oh, that's what a dwarf city sounds like. Like, no. Huh. No. And, um, like, uh, what's his face? That guy did, like, the Wheel of Time or whatever. Robert Jordan. Yeah. I can't the- even read those books. I tried, like, three times to read those books. I can't. And, uh, what's his face? Who? Uh, I can't remember. Okay, that thing that was just posted is the worst. Oh! <laughs> Look at that Mark. Look at that Mark Hamill. <laughs> Fall of the Bounty Hunter. What a terrible name. Yeah. None of which can compare to my gloom fairies. <laughs> <laughs> Lone Ranger, Kameth and Bach. If you guys haven't seen it, uh, seriously, I, I highly recommend go watch the Onion Film Standards review of The Hobbit, Desolation of Smog. It's the greatest thing. Either that or it's the first Hobbit. I can't remember which one. But watch the review of The Hobbit. It's the greatest thing I've ever seen. It's the most accurate thing ever. Like, it's so painfully accurate. Once in group, immersive details. <laughs> Watching it right now. I was going to post it for everybody. Yeah, post it in the chat. Because, my God. It's so accurate on so many levels. Like, to the point where, like, Everyone either has been or has known a person who was this. <laughs> My gloom fairies. It, it, it's perfect because it's just like, it's everything we talk about. Book one. Up. As we know from book one, the shattered amulet of the red warlock. <laughs> it's like, oh man. Ugh. Yeah, that that is my favorite thing they've ever done. Yeah. Which is tough to pick because my god, is that guy the best thing they have going for them? <laughs> yeah. You rewatch the review of the shining. Yeah, it's amazing. But it's <laughs> with amazing. the new context. I still can't really believe that that's him. Huh. 
his gay desires man manifesting as man eating sharks. <laughs> we know that I ones are funny. Which one? Oh the these are the cute boys I'm into now. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, he's the best thing they have. I wonder if this will happen. Yeah, you reviewed Noah. We already saw that. Oh, that was great. A clever metaphor for the life of Jesus. <laughs> Shrouded biblical ties. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Admittedly, this is a homemade costume. What are you watching? I was just looking at that proud life on set. Pied Piper of preteens. The Pied Piper of preteens. <laughs> Jesus, what a title. That's an amazing title. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's weird. All the things I thought I hated like a year ago, two years ago, I'm just like, wait a minute. It's 100% fine. I know that you understand it. I know. It's like suddenly I get it. Oh, okay. Or it's it's all the things that you used to like that you're not, you don't remember why you like. Well, it's like... I've come to terms with the fact that admitting something is technically bad is fine. Something yeah. can be technically bad and awesome at the same time, and it's totally okay. Like, once you accept that, it's like, oh, all right. Great. It's like when I heard somebody say, like, oh, you know, I tried to read the, the, uh, the Walking Dead comics, but the art wasn't that good. I was like, what are you? Yeah. What are you? That's a thing. That's a place you can go. Have we tried the Oculus Rift or used Google Glass? No. Um, a bunch of people I know tried the Oculus Rift last week when uh, PAX was here in Boston. They all said it was cool. I'm more interested in the... Uh, Dave, did you see the hologram thing? Oh, uh, what's that? There's a, uh, I'll send you a video, it's on game trailers, I'll send it to you later. There's a thing um, they're making that's a competitor to the Oculus where you put on a set of glasses and then you put markers in your room, and wherever you put the markers, in between those markers is a hologram field, and if you have the glasses on, holograms appear in that space that look like literal, like, Star Wars holograms. Like... Can you show me that video? Yeah. So, uh... They were talking about, like, they're obviously going to try to make that Star Wars chess game with, like, the monsters, like... Uh, uh, yeah, dude. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Uh, I wonder how many people who got the Google Glass thing, like, because you have to, like, uh, 
I think like when you get it now, you have to uh, like kind of document everything. Yeah. Something like that. I forget. I forget the thing with it. Like how many of those people jerked off with Google Glass? Right. How many of them did that? That must have been a shitload of people. Pretty much everybody. I saw a guy walking around the mall with Google Glass on, and it looked fucking stupid. Yeah. I don't know how that's going to catch on. Like, it just looks stupid. Like, I like how that's the biggest issue with moving forward into the future. Just accepting that some things are going to look fucking ridiculously stupid. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just going to happen. It looked like you were supposed to be wearing something else. You know what I mean? Right. Like the clothes that you wear isn't futuristic enough to support you wearing Google Glass on your face. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, when you, like, okay, when you see a guy in casual clothes with a Bluetooth. Ooh, yeah, that's, uh... It's like, a little, like, jarring. Like, he's supposed to be in a suit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, all of a sudden, it's like, why do you need a Bluetooth? You're like an idiot. I think I found it. Hold on. I'm going to send it to you if it's the right one. I think it's called the Cast AR. Cast AR? Yeah, I think that's what it's called. <laughs> okay, you're right. Yep, it's this one. I like that this is a thing. I'm more I'm more excited about this than uh, I mean the Oculus is going to be cool. I'm excited for that too if they do stuff with it that is cool. Facebook owns it now, so like hopefully good stuff still happens with it. But I'm pretty excited about this if they can make it what it looks like it's going to be. That's that. Trying to mute it. So is there like actual use of it? In oh yeah, you'll see some stuff. I mean, it's still early, but the fact that they can already do what they're doing with it and it's early makes me think that in a couple of years it's going to be pretty great. But they're saying that because of the way it works with the markers and the field, uh, you could cover a whole room with it and the whole room would be a virtual environment. You could turn around 360 degrees in a chair and the whole thing would work. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty excited about buying a wonder salon. Yeah, man, you should. Oh, okay. What? These guys look like the perfect candidates for this thing. Well, yeah, obviously. Why was that fat guy in a skirt? I must have missed that. It's like right in the beginning, he's wearing a skirt with that stupid headset on. You see the thing where they coat the room in it? No, I'm waiting. I'm only like 50 seconds in. Oh, okay. I'm not listening to it. There's um, another one where they, they look down into a table that's covered in it, and the table becomes like a deep space. Like you're looking down inside of like a box. It's really weird. That would like really change like all those D and D games and stuff. That's what they're saying in the video. Is like tabletop games. This is going to completely revolutionize it because if you put it on a table and you put the glasses on, I mean, watch the video, guys. If you don't get what I'm saying, but when you look down at the table, you're, it looks like you're looking into a box. The flat space becomes this three dimensional kind of like deep space. So is it kind of like the uh, 3DS? Uh, yeah, I think so. The way it uses like the AR cards and stuff. Yeah, I think I'm not really sure. There's another one where like a guy is moving a dude around at the end. You'll see. It's got like a dungeon with a bunch of pieces, and it looks really. I don't know. It looks yeah, like this could be really cool. Like a chess set looking thing. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Looks like it could be sweet. like something that mostly pussies would use though. Well, that's why I'm into it. <laughs> oh, God, that guy. I know. With, like, the Cokes and, like, the glasses are just, like, 
flies, flings it across the table. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> that made me not want to watch this video anymore. There's some challenges you got to get through. That was so fucking lame. Yeah, you know. Whatever. It's a blast when you're alone. It's a blast when you're alone. <laughs> it's going to make my tiny apartment feel huge. Huge and exciting. I would have a family and then have them all be dead. And then I would lay that across my dinner table and have all the reflections from them eating be in the room. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a thought. No, that just watch a, them. That is a thought. You're like, oh. It's like they're still with me thanks to augmented reality. Yeah. Hey Dan, how's that uh, job going? Has anyone tried drawing gestures while intoxicated? What's the point of that? Because life's not exciting enough. Has anyone tried doing something poorly because your brain doesn't work? <laughs> That's basically the question. Has anyone woken up and said, well, that was a waste of sketchbook paper. I shouldn't bring it to the bar when I drink. When I'm drunk, I'm usually like, the last thing I want to do is draw. Yeah, I never get that. The, uh, I don't know, I guess that's just us. I never get the drink and draw thing. I get invited I get to them all the time. At all. Like, I'm pretty sure all that really is is like an excuse to go out people and I don't I don't know like I've never been to one to actually draw every time people ask me to go to a drink and draw for some reason in my brain it just translates to hey do you want people in the public to identify that we are artists yeah exactly do you want to go to a bar and have people come over and look over your shoulder and be impressed with who you are is all that translates to to me and it's like no I'd rather stay at home <laughs> I'd rather stay at home and draw a night and actually try to make it look okay I don't know, I don't get it. I'm sure people have a good time doing it and stuff, but I, I don't know. I never understood. Yeah, I don't get it either. Like, I'll go drink with you at a bar. And you can bring a sketchbook if you want, but I'm going to have way more fun if I'm just drinking with you. Yeah, like, I, like if I'm, like, any time I drink, it means that I'm talking forever. It's like if I'm drunk, I'm in, like, a conversation forever. Like, I, I never stop and, like, want to... That's it's like I wouldn't get drunk and read a book. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, so why would I get drunk and like draw? That's right. Seems crazy. Yeah, I don't get it. Like, woo! I especially don't get it when they're like, like the get drunk and write poems. Like yeah. the uh, like the Doctor Sketchies thing that all the cities have, where it's like we're all gonna go as a group and get models and get shit faced and draw models, and I'm like, why? I get that more than a drink and draw, just because there's a model there. Yeah, but if you're drinking, then what's the point of doing a study of a model that's in front of you? Because after three beers, you're going to start being shit at it. <laughs> Why not get a model when you can like actually learn from the model? I have a thing. I'm, I'm going to call it Adderall and Drawing, where we all just take <laughs> Adderall. We hang out, we take Adderall together, and we just draw it's going to be the pop and draw. Like, that would be so much better. Yeah, that'd be great. We just focus. <clears throat> Sleep focus. Yeah, nothing, uh, nothing frustrates me more than trying to draw. Like, I tried it once, because everybody seemed like they enjoyed it. And um, it's really dim in bars, so it's hard to even see the paper. Uh, 
it's super crowded, so people are always coming up and looking, oh my god, you, you do tattoos? <laughs> oh my god. That's drunk, because you're in a bar. Yeah, exactly. So you get the worst kind of people. Yeah. And then you get the, dude, that's sick. I, I used to fucking draw, but, you know, work, you know? Dude, that's fucking, so sick. Fucking, I, I let it go, fucking. I should, I should try it again, though. I should pick My it up. My friend does tattoos. He does, so, he does shit like that. Do you he know does. Mike, do you know Mike Dogerty? <laughs> uh, he, he's got a, he's got a tat shop down in Kingston. You know him? Oh, man, you guys do, like, the same kind of shit. I thought maybe you, like, knew him, because, like, man, your shit's just, like, whoa. It's like fucking Mike. <laughs> Like, I had to say that at the end. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. When they can't find the word, they just say the name. Yeah. 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 I know, it's always the guy, it's always, it's always the girlfriend of that guy is impressed, and then when the girlfriend realizes that life is more than watching you draw, the guy hangs around for some reason, because he's unhappy with who he is. <laughs> and he's like, it seems like your skin is easier to be in than mine. Maybe I should try that. <laughs> How do I become that? How do I get free? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true, Dan. Yeah, every single one of those dudes, the only artist they ever mention is Geiger. That's 100% true. Yeah, it's crazy, actually, thinking about the amount of times random dudes have mentioned Geiger. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Geiger is the one I always hear about. Like, if I ever hear anything, it's Geiger. Yeah. There was a weird pocket in, like, the late 90s, early 2000s, where the only artist people talked about was that guy that did all the Tool stuff. Oh, my God, yeah. It was Geiger and that guy. They were, like, this weird team of, like, the only two artists anyone talked about. Yeah. All the worst people talk about the tool artist. Why do I want to say his name's like Dorian Gray? It's not. It's Alex Gray. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know. It's like, it's like, it's, no, it's Dorian Gray, David Gray. No. Yeah, I don't know. Never understood any of that. It's okay, though. I'm more into Mortis. Mortis was a true artist. Mortis was the true artist. No, 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 no. So much work. Imagine just like deciding that you were a, a troll. Yeah. And that was like. That was a massive part of your career. We're talking about a literal troll, guys. We're talking about a man who identified himself as two things as an adult. A guy who's better in, tr like, you know, as a troll. Like a, like a creature troll. Like a fantasy goblin. And he's a musician. And those are the two things that define him. Like when you can't perform without wearing troll makeup. Yep. Like, what a box you've made for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Can't get out of it. That life seems so hard. When that's what defines you. I'm the troll guy. <laughs> Make troll music. Whew. He doesn't just wear troll makeup. Like, some metal bands will wear, like, prosthetic makeup and look like that or whatever. 
he sings music about being a troll. Yeah. And, like, living in the woods and, like, witches and evil fantasy gods. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, it's like a whole performance art thing where he is a troll singing about being a troll. Keep it going. The first time I saw you, I smelled you more than I could see you. It's the lyrics. Amazing lyrics. Let's listen to some Mortis, shall we? Black metal is not all that because they don't always look like they don't have prosthetics. Let's listen to some Mortis. There it is. The fake strings. Oh boy. Oh, just waiting for the voice. I forgot how long this intro was. Let me just skip it. Let me just skip ahead here. Just kind of moans and creaks. Talks. Yeah. He talks, moans, creaks, and then has like synthesizer. It's it's oh. as it's as if an NPC in Skyrim started a band <laughs> and just talked to you about the creepy house on the hill where they hear sounds at night to music. That's all it is. <laughs> they say there's something up there. I don't know. But the Emperor had it condemned many years ago after the experiments to just techno underneath it. <laughs> like, oh my god. Exactly that. Huh. The smell was strong up there. <laughs> yeah. A lonely old ass. It's as if I could smell her more than I could see her. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you could probably read the lyrics of that song in that normal tone. Let me go ahead and see if I can. And it would be just the same. Let me go ahead and see if that's actually a thing we can do right now. Uh, <laughs> just skyrimming there. It's been ten long years since I smelled the witch. I don't think she will ever go away. <laughs> do you think that's her lurking over there? In that shadow that has been cast by me? Can you smell the witch? The witch is still alive. Uh, Can you smell the witch? I see her dead eyes. If it weren't for the rhymes, it'd be perfect. I know, I'm going to go to another part the that doesn't rhyme. The of rhymes ruins it, but everything else. Does she hide in that old corner over there? Are you dead when you're made of straw? <laughs> yeah, I can see this in Skyrim. All of this works in Skyrim. <laughs> it might be better. Better writing than Skyrim. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's definitely better. It's not a guy turning around on a pivot, not moving his body, just just spinning backwards in a gyration, and then zooming in on his face and going, I've been looking for you. I was sent by the Tharl. You are the criminal of Thark. I will stop you. Huh? And then it zooms out and he starts fighting you. It's so bad. Those games, my god. Those games are those Tolkien fans that don't know how to write Tolkien we were talking about. I know. I, I never understand. Like, I've met people that like the lore in those games, and I never understand it. I'm like, how? Because they've never read a book. Yeah. Well, they've, read, they've read books. They've just been the books that are in Skyrim. <laughs> they've, read those, they've read those books. 
They read the useless books that are in Skyrim. Whoa, whoa. The Tale of Jargon and the Dragon Great was a fantastic read. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. What was that thing you found, that like super sad statistic that was like, it would take 92 hours to read all the books in Skyrim, and it's like, you wasted your time. <laughs> <laughs> That's like four whole days, you're never going to get back. I know. You do a lot in four days. Uh, I don't get it. The things I could do in four days. Besides read books in a game. Just the worst books. Hey man. Some pretty good ones. Are they? Hey, come on. Yeah. Sometimes when you read books, your stat goes up for intelligence. That's pretty sick. Come on, that's pretty sick. Like, I don't know. Go ahead, say what you were gonna say. <laughs> it's like watching the Transformers cartoon when you're a kid, uh -huh. being like, "Now that's a story." <laughs> like, it's like a movie. This yeah. show's like a movie. Yep. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. It's just as good as one. It's a thing that sells a toy. That's what Skyrim is. Whatever. Come on, man. It's pretty dope. Okay, it wouldn't be bad if they weren't so proud of it. I'll say that. Yeah, they, that's the, you've hit the nail on the head. You've hit the nail on the head. It's that guy getting in front of the camera and going... We've really fleshed out our breathing, livable world, complete with its own legends and lore. In fact, to make it more convincing, there's 92 hours of readable material that exists only in the world of Skyrim. Yeah, it's like if it's it weren't that, yeah, those yeah. segments, like I would be like, oh, well, it's just a game, dumb story, who cares? But it's like, they are proud of it, so it makes me, be, makes me want to hate it more. <laughs> uh, I just want to be like, Hmm. Wrong, though. Yep. Wasn't there, like, some amazing... What was that? That interview with Bethesda where the interviewer was trying super hard not to make fun of the guy? Oh, yeah, that was good. And it was, like, amazing. He was, like, talking about the dragons coming back or some shit, and that guy was, like, laughing so hard, trying not to. <laughs> Yeah, he was, like, super into it. Uh, like, it, it reminded me of that, um, that fucking, oh, what was it called? The infamous game, when it... When oh, it, that guy like, who was, like... Gonna cry on stage. Serious things are happening. <laughs> yeah, oh, fuck, what was that? It was the infamous Second Son. Thing. Was it? Or was it the Watch Dogs announcement where the guy was like, did you know that our government... Is a government spying the, in the digital shops, I age? Thought that, that was infamous. Which one was it? Where it like showed all like the graphics of like dollar bills and stock charts and stuff, and he was like the government. Yeah, it was that guy. It was that guy who made infamous. He was talking about how like um, he got in trouble for something with the law. I oh. know what it's like. <laughs> Re was it infamous? Fuck, I can't remember. It was okay. I'm positive it was infamous. Yeah, that was the worst thing. Because, because the best part is that game is so not that. No. <laughs> but to like present it that way and be like about to cry on stage. It's like those same people like, what are you doing? You make toys for kids. I know. Like, Shut up. <laughs> it's like go to any bar in any city and try to tell any normal person what you do for more than 30 seconds and see what happens. I know. Like, Explain to them the story. Please. Nothing you're doing matters to anyone in the real world. Like, stop caring. Yeah, it's Jesus like you, Christ. It, and then also have some, like, you know, be self aware. Like, be able to look at yourself and be like, you know what? I know I'm not the best writer. Turns out I'm not that <laughs> important. I'm not 
I'm not great like, at this. Have some degree of humility. Like, but I like it. Like, if they just said that, like, we really, we like writing, so we, we like to include a story in the game, but we know that that's not the focus. Like, that yeah, would be it's like I would accept. It's okay to make something and like the thing you make, but okay. it's not okay to get so out of touch that you think you're, like, revolutionizing the world. Yeah, that's the worst. That's like, how Jesus it always Christ. comes up. Yeah. This is gonna. The thing I'm doing is gonna change everything. Like it's okay if you make something and then it does change everything, but don't go into it with the mindset that what you're doing is gonna change the world. Then you're just an idiot. Like, wow, I hate those people so much. I think after people play our game, they're really gonna think differently about the course of action the United States is taking in surveillance really opens up a lot of doors and asks a lot of questions about what is right in this modern digital age. I know. Like, like even even then, though, it's like, it's okay to have a point. Yeah, it's fine. Just don't tell me what the point is. Let me figure it out. It's like, and if, and if it's not a good enough story for me to figure it out, then I won't bother yeah. even paying attention. If it's good, see, this is the, this is the thing that nobody seems to get. If something's good, it speaks for itself. So the second you start drowning it in praise, it seems like it's going to suck. Like, overconfidence means you're inconfident. Like, yeah, no, no, nobody gets that. Like, the more, the more outwardly confident you act about something, the less people think it's going to be good because it feels like overcompensation. It's, it's like when a liar over-explains why he's not lying. Exactly. So I don't, I don't get it. It's like, like if something's good, it'll speak for itself. Don't worry about it. But like the second you start getting on that hype train and just burying yourself underneath all this shit you're saying, it seems like you're trying to sell something because it isn't good. You sound like a snake oil salesman who made like a bad investment. And you're trying to get rid of it. Like it just, it feels gross. Like nobody, yeah. nobody gets that. It always feels bad when you start doing that. Yeah, and if you're an artist, especially like, yeah, like you said, J Mob in the chat, it's you know, it's the show don't tell thing. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, like I don't know. I've had conversations with people where they're like, my project's going to change everything. And I'm like, that's sad that you think that. Like, yeah, it's, it's like wow. when you say that, then you're like, oh, okay, so I know a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's like right off the bat, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. And if you're doing it for the wrong reasons, it's going to suck by default. It will not be good if you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Well, it's if, you, if you're able to make that statement, it means that you're already full of yourself. So somebody who's full of themselves can't change the world because they're in that wrong mindset already. Yeah, exactly. It's like they're stupid to start. So, like, the second that happens, it's like, oh, okay. Well, it's going to suck then. Like, the second you become that person, it's, it's not going to be good. Yeah, it's like you got to be humble. Like, you got to be able to, like, hate yourself, I feel like. <laughs> to, like, actually judge what you're doing. Get it to a point where you're, like, you're kind of okay with it. Right. And then maybe it'll be something. But, like, you'll never be probably happy with it. Right. Like, that is a healthy place to be when you're creating something, I feel like. Because otherwise, you're just pumping stuff up. Yeah, it makes, like, makes no sense to me at all. I think it's starting to maybe change a little. I think people are starting to understand that simple's better. Yeah, I think so. I think, yeah. I think simplicity's coming back pretty quick. I think that Marvel gets it. Marvel does get it. 100% Marvel gets it. Over explaining things isn't necessary. Ideas can stand for themselves. Um, a good idea is a good idea. You can have a character like Thanos that's really stupid and it can still be a good idea. It's just about treating it correctly and not trying to overcompensate for something that doesn't need to be compensated for. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like, uh, like, perfect point is in Captain America, the new one, when he's like, and he's got a metal arm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, there it is. It's one line. I'm like, thank you. Thanks for just saying, and he's got a metal arm, like it's ominous. Yep. <laughs> like, it's not stupid. It's the best. I love that. I was like, thank God you just said that with a straight face. Yeah. It's the greatest thing. And it's the it's like earlier when I was talking about how satisfying it is to play Dark Souls and see things like a giant rat that just has a human voice. Like, at no point in the game is there a character who goes, many years ago, there was a man who was covetous of the great soul, and after years of messing with it, he turned himself into what represented him the most, a rat. But because he was a human, he can still talk, and that's why the rat can talk. Like, doesn't... <laughs> you don't have to explain it. Like, it's fine. It's okay. You're explaining it because you're uncomfortable. That exactly. That you're thinking someone's going to think, oh, a giant rat that talks, that's dumb. But if I can find a way for it to make sense in the lore of the universe, then it's going to be great. And it's like, no, it's fine. It's a fucking fantasy game. A giant talking rat can it's fine on its own. You don't need to Batman it and tell me. Like, uh Yeah. But I think, yeah, I think simplicity's coming back, which thank God for that. I'm so sick of the age of explanation. The new X Men adventure. Just everything. Every every explanation. Sorry, I'm just responding to something. It's like... <laughs> every time, there's one phrase where every time I hear it, whether it's in a movie, a game, a book, I just stop. I'm done. Every time I hear it. And it's the what is sentence. It's like... Uh, <laughs> I think the only time it ever worked was in The Matrix because of the context but it's uh, when someone goes, well, what about this? And then they go, what is this? Just shadows on the wall. <laughs> Perhaps your perception of the idea was fleeting. It's like when I saw Iron Man 3, and he was like, but I thought the Mandarin was this guy. What is the Mandarin? Fear incarnate. Perhaps the Mandarin is just an idea. A shadow on the wall. It's like, oh, shut up. <laughs> Shut the fuck. You are so proud of the script you wrote. Get out of here. Like, my God. Yeah. What is the government? A lie we tell ourselves to sleep at night. Shadow on the wall. <laughs> uh. My story's kind of changed the way we look at politics. I hope so. <laughs> Everybody thinks Skull and Shark's just like a cool 90s throwback adventure about a skull and a shark, but actually it's about the rise and fall politically and financially of a city and what it affects all the people that live there. <laughs> I know, it can't just be fun. It's about how marginal tax rates... And certain, you know, entitlement issues in the city caused it to go into financial collapse. Yeah. And what's Batman going to do about it? <laughs> <laughs> Things that should never show up in the Batman universe. A stock market. <laughs> Doesn't belong there at all. Doesn't need to be there. The president going on TV and saying, we hope Batman can save Gotham City. Should never happen. It's a lot of typing. Yeah, I'm just responding to every single comment on my comics, because otherwise my comics will fade away into oblivion. Oh, right. Go.
got to nurture that audience, too. Yeah. So, I told you about Starville getting picked up. Yeah, did you tell these people, though? No. Okay. I didn't know if you could talk about it. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to say specifics about anything yet, because I don't know for sure. Okay. But, yeah. Did I tell you about, like, what they could do by the uh, um, prints and stuff? No, you just told me they wanted to publish it and release it. Okay, they were talking to me about, like, what they could do to bring it into, like, the comic. It's, like, the print. Mm -hmm. It would be, like, good for it. And they are talking about, like, doing, like, glow-in-the-dark ink and stuff, like, Nebula's arms. That's pretty cool. And, like, all this kind of stuff that, like, used to happen, like, when we were kids. I was like, oh, man. When's the last time I saw a glow-in-the-dark poster? That's great, yeah. I was like, yeah, let's do that. Let's do, like, stupid stuff like that. But, um... That's great. I'm waiting to be done with, like, the first book of it. And then, hopefully that, but... Comics just don't pay anything, so, like, I still need to have the Patreon thing up. Oh, yeah, totally. Because, like... Are they okay with you having the Patreon on top of publishing? That's what I'm going to discuss with them. Yeah, because you're... I mean, unless it's, like huge like hellboy huge the cost of publishing is probably going to be recouped in sales pretty much you're not going to see that much of a profit no i mean you don't really make money in print anyway right like it's mostly just like like what people make money from is merchandising like other stuff and like selling the rights to like options for films and stuff like that doing the actual book doesn't do anything That's cool, though. I mean, hopefully they'll understand that. They should. I mean, I don't I don't really see how that would be a conflict of interest. That money isn't money that's taken out of their pockets in any way. I'm sure they wouldn't want to, like, stand in the way of me doing the thing that they're going to publish. Yeah, plus it builds an audience for it. You can say, like, oh, you know, this is going to be in print now, and those people are more likely to get it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, uh, the miniatures company I've been working for, I'm going to ask them if I can start getting paid in trades. What do you mean? Um, like, having their sculptor make something for me. Uh, as that would a, be cool. Yeah, based on, like, my own designs or Skull and Shark or something like that, because their sculptors are insanely good. Like, for a miniatures company, they're really, really crazy. So, I'm going to start asking him because I've got enough that I can kind of coast for a little while so I'd rather have like statues like custom little things yeah that would be cool oh, stuff like that I had like that guy um, contacted me and was talking about doing the Starvale like bus series yeah that'd be sweet he contacted me forever ago but you could literally just take the portraits and make them into statues and it would be cool yeah, so I'm still waiting to see what happens with that. That'd be really cool, though, to get started on that line. Yeah. It'd be cooler than having just, like, a paycheck. I'd rather get, like, a cool thing in the mail than have it. Yeah. Jesus Christ, it's so fucking dumb. What? The rhino from Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, he looks really stupid. Doesn't look like anything. Look at that. Look at this. Figure got released from the Hot Toys. Oh, wow. That's what it looks like. Oh, those little eye holes in the horn are so misplaced. So, wait. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. Is that star on his shoulder supposed to be there because Captain America was a success and it's the Winter Soldier arm? Why was that decision made? I don't know. Who cares? Like, so is bad. that like why is that there? It's so bad. Like, look at these other shots of it. I'm just gonna send you a few. Of them. Oh my god. Like, this is what we're talking about, though. Like, they can't just have it be the rhino. This is fucking awful. It has to be that thing where they adapt it to make it work. 
Who designed this? This is so bad. It's not real. Of course it's not real. It's fucking Spider-Man. <laughs> like, it's Spider-Man. Do you see the title? It doesn't even look like a rhino. It just looks bad. It looks like it looks like somebody took the bad guy from Iron Man 1 and said, this movie was successful, so we need a fat robot that looks like the dude that Jeff Bridges is at the end. And then someone saw Captain America being popular, and they said, let's put a red star on that arm for the visual connection. And that's all it is. It looks like those two things slammed together with a spike on top because of rhinos. It's like somebody paused Transformers when he was in the middle of transforming. And he wasn't anything yet. But really, this looks just like the Jeff Bridges thing. Except for the head. It's like identical. You know, minus the good design. Because that was a good design. This one has like weird angles and squares all over it that don't belong there. It just looks ugly as shit. Like, it's just bad. Like, this looks cool for nobody. Nobody. Jesus. Nobody likes this. <laughs> I don't care what anybody says. Nobody likes this. That's really bad. You couldn't possibly like this. So is he supposed to be like a Soviet? Like what? Why? What's happening? Like you like it because you're willing to compromise. That's the only reason somebody likes that. Well, I like that they made a... See, this is the thing that I don't get, okay? This is the thing that I do not fucking get. They made the first movie, and the plot of the first movie is a guy messes with animal DNA and turns into an animal man. So then they have movie number two, and they go, a guy who's a rhino man is pretty stupid. And it's like, did you watch your first movie? <laughs> did you watch... You're combining a guy with jellyfish DNA to make him a transparent black dude that's full of electricity, and a, a rhino man is a bad idea? So <laughs> lizard man with a human face is okay. Transparent black dude full of lightning that looks insanely stupid is okay. But a rhino guy who's just a ripped dude with a spike coming out of his head is over the line? So you have to make it a robot to make it okay? Like, what? Who is making these calls? Oh, this looks so shit. Electro does look bad. I'm sorry, Styles. I'm sorry you think Electro looks good. He looks like a black dude in white face and then tinted blue. Like, that's all he looks like. Like, even if you said he doesn't look bad, yeah, but he could look so much better than that. He could look like, you know, anything <laughs> but that. Like, you could, like, that's that's that thing of just saying, like, like, like yeah, like, it doesn't even matter. Like, he could be a black guy, but, like, why not make him... A black guy that just has yeah. lightning powers. Why make him in white face and transparent? I mean, it, like, as, like, you're saying, I'm a black guy, so I have to say he looks good. If you're a black guy, you should say, why can't he just be a black guy who has <laughs> lightning powers? <laughs> there doesn't need to be a gimmick outside. Like, I'm okay with, like, seeing the veins light up underneath his skin. I thought that was cool in the context of, like, oh, it's like a jellyfish or a stingray or whatever the fuck, electric eel. Like, I get that. That's cool. But you can do that with a person that just has normal skin. And like, yeah, like, why can't when he's about to use the power, why can't his skin skin start to become translucent around where the lightning's flowing? Yeah, exactly. That would be fine. That would make sense. It'd be like when you put a flashlight under your hand when you're a kid and you can see yeah, like, through your hand and it's all red and all the veins. Like, you could do that just with blue and it would look fine when the lightning comes out. But there's no reason a black guy has to become white, transparent, and full of lightning. There's no reason for that at all. He could just be a black dude that has that hoodie and can shoot lightning. But then, that's what happens when you try and make things real. You put yourself in smaller and smaller boxes. Yeah. Until it doesn't work, and then it has to work in the little prison you made for yourself. Right. And then you're like, oh, okay, he's a jellyfish. He has to look like a jellyfish. I don't know. <laughs> and then there's the Fright Night Green Goblin. Yeah. But, yeah, I don't, I just don't get it. Like, 
I really don't get the Electro thing at all. And then the other thing is, is you know what I, I think it was, because I have to think this way because this is the decisions, they, this is how they make these decisions, it's not artists making the decisions. The only reason Electro looks the way he does in the movie is because Watchmen was a financial success and Dr. Manhattan was blue and transparent. It's the only reason. They said, oh, what else has been in a movie that shot lightning recently? That blue guy, let's make him look kind of like that so people identify it. And they go, oh, I liked that, maybe I'll like this. But somehow the CG is worse five years later than it was when they made that because, oh boy, the scenes of him in the trailer look insanely bad. He looks like a Gumby. <laughs> it's like shooting at him around that stuff that's all blowing up. And they put it in slow motion just so you can see how stupid it looks like. Like, like I, I guarantee you the only reason he's blue is because of Dr. Manhattan being in the Watchmen movie. Guaranteed. That came up in the meeting, and that's why it happened. There's no other reason. Uh, yeah. But it's contrast. Like, the cool thing about all of this stuff happening is that all you have to do is know that contrast is a thing. Yeah. And you just do the opposite, and you'll be successful. <laughs> That's really all it is. Do the opposite of what everybody else is doing, because everybody's tired of it. Everybody's tired of the realistic take on everything. Yeah, it becomes refreshing. Yeah, so when you do your thing, whatever it is, it's like, I don't know. So that's the thing is like everybody wondered why like, you know, Batman Begins and The Dark Knight were so good. The reason why they were so good is because throughout the 90s and into the early 2000s, everything was camp. That was the thing. Everything had to be campy. Anything even remotely related to an IP that was a comic book or game had to be campy by default because they weren't confident in the idea. So everything was a joke. You get like the Joel Schumacher Batmans. You get like all the, you know, even yeah. the even the X-Men movie was campy. But it's like, so then somebody said, you know what, let's do the exact opposite of that and make it as dark and gritty as possible. And then it exploded, so then everybody started to do that. That's because everybody's tired of the other thing, and they're like, I've been waiting for somebody to take this seriously. Exactly, and now 12 years after they took it seriously and made it dark and gritty, everybody's going, oh, can't we just have fun with these characters again? Yeah. So it's just, it's the, it's the push and pull. It's like, and then like, Kick-Ass was like the medium. Like, I liked that when that came out. It yeah, exactly. Like, like it's, it's... Well, Marvel's... Like, yeah, Marvel's been doing that thing where it feels serious, but all the ideas are still fun and kind of campy. So, like, they're finding this weird middle ground where it's like... Well, oh, Marvel's literally making their comic books. Yeah, they're like, oh, you know, it feels serious, but also it's, like, really fun and we're not taking it too seriously. But, yeah... I don't know, I don't I don't get it. I don't get like the he's a rhino. Let's make him a giant battle armor because I don't know, Pacific Rim came out. That's cool, man. Okay. Iron Man Iron Man and Pacific Rim are huge right now, so let's make that rhino a robot man. Yeah, Cyborg is going in Superman and Batman. I don't know why. I feel like the movie's crowded enough with Superman and Batman. Like, I don't even know how they're going to make that, but apparently Wonder Woman's in it, and Cyborg's in it. Now, keep in mind, I don't know anything about DC characters. I, I kind of know their names. I don't, I don't know anything about them. The only one I know is Batman. It was the only one I liked as a kid. Yeah. And now back to Captain Marvel. Yep. Shazam. Make that movie. Please make that movie. It's just crazy that, like, it's not hard to make a movie. That You know, it's actually weird. I rewatched uh, a couple days ago, I rewatched Spider Man and Spider Man 2 because it was on Netflix. It popped up. And uh, those movies aren't bad. 
they're like Spider Man Two especially is like a really good movie. Like it it feels right all the way through. Like it's not it's not super serious and dark, and at the same time it's not campy and ridiculous. And like Doctor Octopus is just let's call him Doctor Octopus, and it's just like matter of fact. And it's like that's fine. It's okay. It doesn't need to be anything else. Like I don't I don't get it. I feel like those are still better than the new ones. They could have just re-released those. Yeah. Yeah, those are, those are good movies. Like, sure, the Green Goblin looked silly in the first one. I'm not going to defend that. It looked stupid, but the movie itself was still handled well. Yeah, that Green Goblin mask. Oof. Well, you can't cast someone like Willem Dafoe who's scarier than the costume without the costume on and then have him put the costume on. He looks more frightening with the mask off. Yeah, he does. Like that scene of him staring in the mirror when he's like, Harry, Harry, Harry. It's like, you're horrifying. (laughs) You don't need the mask at all. I'm more scared of you without it. Like, please, take it off so I can be scared. That prosthetic, though, that whole mask. That one they didn't use. Oh, yeah, that was perfect. I think about that all the time. Yeah, that was perfect. That was one of the most perfect, like, adaptations. Yeah, that was amazing. It looks so good. It looked like something out of, like, Legend. Yeah, that was super, super good. I always think about when the eyes go up and he does the sad face. Yeah. But, like... This in the chat. This is scarier than the Green Goblin costume. Like, that's horrifying. I'm more scared of that. That's the thing I liked. I liked how over the top it was. I liked that Sam Raimi was just like, oh, it's a comic, and it doesn't need, you know, it should be kind of ridiculous, but taken seriously. I think that's the thing. It's the difference between being serious and just taking it seriously. You don't need to be serious, you just need to take it seriously. Yeah, there's that part in, like, the Spider-Man movie where it's, like, there's fun stuff in it. Yeah. Like, but then he beats the shit out of Spider-Man. Right. And he's, like, bloody and stuff, and, you know, people die. Yeah. It's more than just, like, a campy thing. Right. But it's handled like a comic book. Like, in the comics, there's all kinds of stuff that happens. It's, like, light. And then, like, more light than anything that would happen in real life. But at the same time, there's also, like, super dark moments. Well, yeah, people don't seem to get that opposites enhance each other. In the same way that, like, if you're painting with complementary colors, if everything's mostly green and you put a little bit of red somewhere, everything feels more intense all over the board. It's like, if you make a movie that's entirely dark and gritty, the movie becomes boring because there's no contrast. So the dark and gritty becomes mundane and regular and it just doesn't feel dark and gritty. Dark and gritty works best when there's little punctuations throughout the movie of like humor, you know, lighthearted stuff, comedy, you know, just a relief because then by contrast, the dark and gritty parts feel darker and grittier. So it's like if you make something that's kind of lighthearted and adventurous and then there's suddenly something very violent, it's a whoa, that's really heavy. Like, it feels that way. But if the whole thing's just dark all the way through, it's like, oh. You get kind of bored with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, like, all the Tarantino movies work so well. Like the sudden turns that he has between the two opposites where it's like lighthearted adventure and suddenly it's like oh shit like the most obvious thing is like just watch drive yeah it's super slow and then when there's violence it's super violent so but that's the thing so much 
even the super violent stuff in Drive isn't actually that violent, but it feels more violent because everything else in the movie isn't. Something like a guy hitting a dude with a hammer isn't crazy. <laughs> yeah, like it isn't crazy over the top, but it feels over the top because everything else in the movie is played down so much. Yeah. yeah, I don't get it. It seems like really obvious stuff. Yeah. It's always like, for me, it's always the end of Kill Bill. Where it's like, she goes into that club, and it's this super fun thing, over-the-top action, where, like, she's having fun killing the crazy 88, and at one point, like, surfer music starts playing, and it's just ridiculous, and the choreography's fun, and you can tell they're having fun making it, and it just feels, you know, violence is happening, but it feels lighthearted, it feels adventurous, it feels good. And then she goes up on the roof, and she fights, you know, Orinishi. And she just gets the shit kicked out of her, and she starts losing, and she's bloody, and there's no music playing, and all you hear is the thing dipping the water in the background. And it's just like, instantly the mood is so heavy, because everything preceding it was so opposite of that emotion. It's mm -hmm. like, that's so well handled. Like, so well handled. Yeah, the dinner scene in Django. Exactly. Like, a long period of rising tension where it's very silent, and then a sudden burst of energy. Makes it so much better. That's why, I like, the Transformers movies just are boring, because it's just action all the way through. <laughs> so your brain shuts off. By the time you're at the end, you don't even see what's happening anymore. Yeah, I mean, like, you just don't... That's the thing about it is that you just don't see it. No, you don't even see it anymore because you go numb to it. It become yeah. it becomes so regular that you stop recognizing it. Yeah, I mean, like just the most like just an obvious thing is like walking around at night and then seeing a light in the dark. Yeah, like that's that's what it is. That's what the contrast is. You need moments like that so that you go like, oh. That's why I like. Uh... The first Hellraiser movie so much. That was like my favorite as a kid. It still is my favorite horror movie because you watch Hellraiser for the Cenobites. They're in the movie for maybe five minutes. They're really not there, like at all. You go into that movie to see them and that movie is 95% not them. And that's why they're so cool. In the sequels to that movie... It's all about them, and they're always on the screen, and everything's going crazy, and that's why those movies suck, because there's no counterweight. Like, yeah. little cool things like that are only cool if they're in small doses. It's like it's like when people talk about making a Boba Fett movie. Yeah, it's like, no. Yeah. It's the lightsaber argument. Yeah. When there's two in the entire galaxy, it's the coolest thing ever, because it's rare. When there's 6,000 on screen, you just, your brain shuts off. Suddenly it's stupid. Yeah, it's really stupid. When everybody's the best. Because <laughs> it's not special anymore, by definition. Special means it's exemplary. It's, it's exceptional. When it's not the exception, when it's the norm, it's not cool. Yeah, nobody cares. It's standard equipment. And yeah. it's just like the idea of a memory of a time when that was a thing gets your brain thinking and you can be like make it as cool as you want but like that's you know that makes it feel more special like that makes what's happening in the moment even yeah it, it's a, like oh so it doesn't exist it's a weird mindset to get in but it's like when you really love something use less of it mm -hmm. because less is always more when it comes to cool ideas I don't know, it's just, you know, don't, <laughs> if, you, if you really love something, don't use it that much. Keep it, keep it special. Yeah, when you design a character that you feel like is your icon, don't use them that much. 
he's the thing that people are gonna like love. <sighs> yeah. It's like the Ninja Turtles one movie when I was a kid. I didn't realize it when I was a kid. The reason that movie was awesome, because Casey Jones was my favorite, because he was like everybody's favorite. The reason Casey Jones was so cool is because he only wears the mask in two scenes of the whole movie. Yeah. He wears it briefly in the, the first time you see him. He takes it off within the first 45 seconds. And then he wears it again in the coolest scene in the whole movie when the burning building thing happens. And that's it. He never puts it on again. And that's why those two scenes are so cool. Style says, you mean Shark, Dave? No, we have, like, characters in Skull and Shark that we consider to be, like, our favorites. Yeah. That are sparse. Yeah, they barely show up. Yeah, like, it's not just them. Like, those are our, like, Ninja Turtles. I feel like in Skull and Shark, Skull and Shark are probably my least favorite characters. You me too. Yeah, definitely. Skull and Shark are just, like, the fun thing that... And it's like the brand. Yeah. To like start the world. They're the vehicle that everything else gets to ride on, basically. Yeah. Yeah, we have we have never showed like any of the characters. No, nobody knows who any of them are. They only know Skull and Shark. There's a good little handful. I mean, I think we both have the same favorite character. Yeah. <laughs> that no one's seen. <laughs> but, uh... Funnest to, like, write for. Yeah, the, the best one to write for. Visually the most exciting because he's so opposite of everything else in the world. Uh, yeah, he's... he's oh, I love it. <laughs> Can't wait. I just like coming to scenes with certain characters where you're just like... Finally, like, this is the one that you, like, want to make the lines for and stuff. Yeah, exactly. You, like, know what you want them to say <laughs> before I just, you can get there. I just like when we were writing it, there would be points where we go, well, this scene can't be that cool because of what has to come next. And they're like, oh, okay. And you gotta, like, downplay it. <laughs> like, intentionally making something less good so the other part is better. I love doing it. That's such a fun exercise is to be like, let's make this less cool. So everything else seems better right next to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing as Wolverine. Um, the X-Men aren't Wolverine. The X-Men are Cyclops. And that's why Cyclops is the boring character. But all the movies are about Wolverine, so that's why Wolverine's boring now. <laughs> Wolverine's supposed to be that you know, guy in the background who doesn't really want to be part of the team, who just says sarcastic stuff and hates what he's doing. Like, he's the Raphael. Like, that's why he was cool. Everything they've done with him in the movies completely destroyed the whole point of the character. Yeah, I know. That was the dumbest thing. Like, I don't know. It's supposed to be, we're the super team, and I'm the leader, Cyclops, like the Boy Scout proud dude and then you know Wolverine's the guy that makes jokes in the background and makes fun of everybody for being so lame and that's why you like him like, yeah he's he's you yeah he's you looking at this dude and going wow that's lame like but yeah I don't know but apparently no apparently he's a sensitive uh, ronin <laughs> wandering the farscape the farscape I don't know Apparently every movie has to be about him because they're not confident in any other character. And they go, everybody likes this guy. So let's oversaturate. That's the thing is I love that I love that term um, giving the people what they want and I love it because it's always wrong. People don't know what they want. People's favorite character, they don't they don't nine times out of ten people don't understand why their favorite character is their favorite character. So when you look at something like X-Men and the most popular character is Wolverine, so then you make the movie for the fans that's about Wolverine, that's why the movie sucks. 
is because they don't know why they like it. They like it because it's downplayed, it's in small doses, it's a counterbalance to the rest of the world. Like, that's why that character is effective. The second you give people their most favorite thing on a dish, it sucks. It's the Boba Fett movie argument again. Yeah. Yeah, that's weird. You can't, like... I don't know. That's why you just gotta make things that are... by, like, one person. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Just, like, do it on your own. Every time someone says we're going to give the fans what they want, I instantly lose faith in it. I'm like, oof, the fans don't know what they want. Mm. Come on. And it also depends on why you like the character, too. Like, it's like what Dan said, could you do a Joker movie? I think you could do a movie where the Joker is the villain, of course, because it's like he can be the main character. Yeah. Because you love him for being that, which is like the the other side of that. Right. Is it like he's interesting and he like says cool things and he's such a good character just on his own that it's not like that's the things that define Wolverine and make him the cool thing he is in contrast to the group and stuff. Right. This can be the opposite. You know, the opposite can be true for somebody like the Joker. Where, like, he pulls the story. He's, like, the reason the story's good. Yeah, he can be the reason it's good, but I don't think you can make something that's entirely about him. No. The only reason, like, this is this is exactly what we've been talking about the whole time. The only reason the Joker is as good as he is is because he's in a universe where everything is the complete polar opposite of what he is. Everything in Gotham is dark and gritty and serious and sad. All the other villains are tragic villains where something horrible happened. Mr. Freeze lost his wife, blah, 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 blah. Everything, you know, Batman was orphaned, people are murdered, crime's on the rise, people are losing their homes, etc., etc., etc. And then you've got the Joker. And he's just this clown, and he's fun, and that's why he's good. He's not, he's not a great character. He's just good in that universe. Out of context, he's boring as fuck. He wouldn't work in the Marvel Universe. You know what I mean? Like, he wouldn't work at all. He only works because he's in a place where everything's the opposite. Yeah. But that being said, it's like a character like that works. Just like, just because he is like a huge part of like the Batman movie, but like the Batman, it needs to be Batman and the Joker, but it's like, you know, you can put a lot more focus on a character like that who can be the sole contrast of the thing as opposed to somebody like, like, is there so many different reasons why a character is good? Right. It's not just like, you know, like contrast to the world. That's like a major part of the character. Like that's like his big thing. Like that's why he's so important because he is such a polar opposite of everything. Right. But you tone that down to little bits and pieces, like a polar opposite to a group, to a person, to whatever they become like different um they, be, they have like a different focus to them like where they're not able to be like such a huge part and they shouldn't be right yeah people never seem to like understand that half of the reason why a character is good in a story is because of how they relate to the universe they've been put in so when you take the character out of that and make something that entirely revolves around that character on their own it's not going to work Like, the setting and the context of the character is half of the battle. Probably more than half the battle. Yeah, it's like taking Han Solo away from Luke Skywalker. Yeah, it doesn't work anymore. Could you do that? Like, he's cool because of how they interact. Like, you get to see his personality because he's, you know, like, juxtaposed to this other dude. Yeah, if he doesn't have an audience to show off for in the movie, he's just boring as fuck. Super boring. It's like the Man With No Name movies with Clint Eastwood. The reason that character's cool is because all the other characters talk and he really doesn't. All the villains have like a bravado and they're like, well, you're going to walk into this town and blah, 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 blah. And they're all cocky and they speak a lot. 
And then he just sits there and kind of smirks and doesn't really say anything, and that's why he's cool. If he was giving speeches about saving the Wild West and being a great cowboy, he would suck. Like, he only works because he's the opposite of what he's set up against. Are storytelling skills natural? Or, well, I mean, reading a lot definitely helps, but... You have, you have to hate everything. Like a, the, it's, it's cynicism, honestly, and I hate, I hate saying that because people are going to misunderstand what I'm saying, but uh, cynicism is like the most powerful tool you can have because when something's not good enough and you're disappointed in it, there's two things you can do. You can get mad at it and just internalize it and become sour and bitter, or you can look at it creatively and go, why did that suck? How could it could have been better? How do you fix it? And then when you start realizing why something was bad and how it could have been better, you start getting this arsenal of storytelling tools over time where you go, oh, this movie didn't work for these exact reasons, and I'll never make those mistakes because I identified them. Yeah, you have to be able to look at things constructively and not just be one of those people that accepts everything they're given. Like, so many people just go like, oh, but that's fine. Oh, but that's an okay movie, like... No, like, if you want to do that kind of stuff for a living, like, figure out why it wasn't perfect to you. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you can figure out why it wasn't perfect to you, then you can better understand your own stuff going into it and be like, I know what I wanted, and I know what I wasn't getting, so now I know what to include. Yeah, exactly. And even stuff I like. Sometimes I go see things and I really like them, but they weren't what was advertised, and they weren't what I was expecting, so I'm disappointed. And it's like... Yeah, that's that's cynical to be like, oh, that wasn't, you know, that wasn't what I wanted. That wasn't good. It could have been better. Like, I, okay, so the example I always use, and people have given me so much shit for saying this in the past. I, when I saw Pan's Labyrinth, I was really disappointed in it as a movie based on a trailer. I loved the movie as a movie. When I saw it, I went, oh, this is really good. But compared to what they said it was going to be in the trailers, this wasn't that great. So what I did was I went back and I looked at the trailer instead of just getting sad, and I said, oh, okay, I thought this was going to be like a Brian Froud, Jim Henson kind of thing where it's this whole big world and there's all this lived-in design stuff. And, like, I was expecting, like, you know, the trailer shows the frog, it shows Pan, it shows the dude at the dinner table. So I thought, oh, they showed these three cool things. That must mean that there's at least ten cool things they didn't show. Because the stuff you show in the trailer is the teaser, so I was expecting more. When I saw the movie, I went, oh, the only fantasy elements in the movie are the three things that were in the trailer, and there's nothing else. There's, like, this political plot about Nazis and, you know, Spain, or whatever it was. And then I went, but the movie itself was really good on its own, but it wasn't the movie I was expecting to see. So all the stuff I wanted to see, I now own. <laughs> Those are all my ideas now, because he didn't use them. Like, I just think of the fountain trailer. Yeah, the fountain was another one where it's like that was not the movie that was advertised at all. That but trailer, like, look, cool that trailer movie. was so good. The trailer was so good. But yeah, I mean, I don't hate that movie. Well, I hate the fountain, but. I don't hate uh, Pan's Labyrinth. It just wasn't the movie I was expecting to see at all. Mm. <laughs> but that's okay. But yeah, I don't know. I feel like I feel like cynicism is like the first step in like a good creative analyzation of something. Yeah, because this I mean like just think about like a comedian like they have observations on life because they hate everything. Yeah. So they pay attention to how people talk and they pay attention to like how people, you know, things that people do wrong. It's like, and the things that they do wrong, because most comedians are just reflecting off stuff that they do. So like when they tell a joke, it's not like something that happened. It's something that like they hate about themselves that they probably did or whatever. It's like things like that you have to be able to like look at and be super like judgmental. Yeah. Because, like, you're judging everything all the time because you have a very specific vision of what you want. So, like, I know for me that goes, like, just 
a long way. It's because like, if you're not making it for yourself, then like who are you making it for? Right. I mean, that's the thing is like, it's totally fine to not like stuff. It's totally fine to not like tons of stuff. As long as that's the first step towards doing something productive with that dissatisfaction. Yeah. If all, if all you're, if all you're going to do is get mad at it just to be mad at it, then you're wasting your time and your energy. It takes a lot of energy to be mad at something all the time. But it's like, if that's the first step in a series of events that lead you to doing something creative that comes from it, then that's great. That's that's super important to know how to break something down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've had, like, uh, I'm only going to bring this up because I can only talk from experience. I'm not going to make up hypotheticals. But, like, when we were writing scripts, uh, me and Dave, for stuff, there were times where we'd write whole chapters that we really loved, and then we'd finish the script and come back to it, and we'd go oh, wait a minute, the cynical side of our brain now realizes that this is total shit. And you have to know how to do that. You have to be able to look at something that you have done and go, this is trash. Yeah. Like, this has to go. Yeah, yeah, I know. We did that so many times. We did it like 20-something, so many times. Whole thing's just deleted. But you got to be able to do that. And I think the only way to really know how to do that is to really start breaking things down in an honest way. Like, nothing frustrates me more than when I ask somebody what they thought about a movie. And they go, yeah, yeah it was all right. It was worth the six bucks. And it's like, give me your thoughts. <laughs> like, was that it? Was that all you thought of it? It was just, it's worth six bucks? Like, for God's sake, like, think. Use your brain. What would you have done differently? What did you like the most? What was effective to you? Yeah, like if you're just, if you don't care to do that stuff ever and it doesn't interest you, I totally get why you would just be like, yeah, whatever it was that. But it's like if it's something you're interested in and like you like storytelling and stuff or yeah. like you want to do it on your own, then like you need to be able to recognize when something isn't working. Right. It's just normal. It's like it's it's like when you look at a person's artwork and you're not willing to accept that you know they got the hands wrong. It's like, yeah, like I can see it. We all see it. It's not okay to just accept that. You're hurting that person, and you're hurting yourself by saying that that's okay to just be you know fundamentally having problems that hold you back. It's like you have to be able to look at them the same way you look at your work and get better. Yeah. It just helps you improve on a very fundamental level. And that being said, it's like, you know, don't try to get things perfect right away. Just go in and fail. And go in the same way you do artwork. You just try and you try and you try and you try. And do the same thing with stories. Because you're going to learn eventually. Like, like, for instance, like I'm doing this Starvale thing. Like, I don't think the story is great. Like, I'm just doing it because I enjoy it. I'm trying to get better at actually, like, storytelling in the comics medium, like, with the artwork. And, like, I'm super, like, hard on myself with everything. But at the same time, I know, like, okay, it's not going to be perfect. Like, I'm just winging it on my own. Like, I have a full story planned out and stuff. I've changed it, like, a thousand times. And it's like, I'll keep doing that, you know? But... You have to be able to, like, I feel like, look at yourself honestly when you're going through something like that and not just, you know, yeah, not just accept that it's what it is or whatever or that things are set in stone or that you can't change this or that, like, you know, whatever else. You have to be willing to just, like, try it, bomb at it, and keep going. So in the chat... Ivan says, so it's cool to be a douche. Thanks. Uh, no. It's what we're talking about. I mean, I know you're joking, but just to clarify, because people misunderstand things a lot. We're not saying be a douche. That's different. That's being a dick for being a dick's sake. Um, it's okay to be, you know, it's okay to not like things. As long as you use that to, you know, fuel your own kind of creativity. Not liking things is hugely important because it makes you want to make things better. 
it's like, you know, if that's fuel to improve stuff, then great. If it's just, you know, I don't like it because I could have done it better. And then you never explain why or try to do it better or you, that's, that's pointless. Yeah. As long as people don't want to burn you alive. I mean, even if they do, I mean, whatever. If you're doing something you enjoy doing and you, you know, who cares? There might be people that totally hate you, whatever. Yeah, there's plenty of people that don't like me or them. Oh, yeah, there's tons. It's like, fine. Not, who cares? Like, I don't know you. Yeah. I'm, like, trying to enjoy my life and, like, do what I want. Like, trying to do something, like, good. So, yeah, I'm like, so just, who cares, really? Like, that's that whole like online thing of like pleasing everybody. Like, yeah, your mission can't be to make people like to make as many people like you as possible. It can't be. You'll never win that fight. Yeah, that's impossible. It's pointless too because there's so many more important things to work on. Yeah, I don't get that. I don't get the whole the internet is realm thing. Yeah, no, it's, to it's totally fine to be cynical as long as you use it to be creative and productive. It's totally fine if people don't like you as long as you're doing what you enjoy and, you know, you're making it making it work for you. Mm -hmm. All that shit's fine. Anyone who tells you that that's not fine is too full of themselves to admit otherwise. All of that is fine. And it's natural. And it's inevitable. <laughs> totally inevitable. Yeah. It's like when uh, it's like Styles just said, you can't say I don't like Frozen on the internet, I lift tons of enemies. You can say it, you just care too much about having the enemies. When Brave came out, I loved Brave as a movie. It wasn't the movie they advertised, and I told everybody that I was disappointed in it. I loved it, stylistically, visually, as a story, it was great. But they advertised a very dark CG movie about a girl with a bow that was going to fight monsters in the woods, and that did not happen. That was the trailers. I didn't even know there was going to be music in it. Like, the trailers were super dark. And I was like, oh, cool, Pixar is going to do, like, an opposite thing, and it's going to stand out and be really cool. And then it really wasn't that, but it was still really good. So it's like, you know, you can you can tell people that. If you didn't like it for valid reasons, you can list those valid reasons, but if you're worried about people being mad at you, then that's your own thing. Yeah, like, for me, like, like, yeah, you know, like I don't like Frozen. Like, like I didn't like Frozen. Like I saw that movie. Like the thing I didn't like about it was that it felt like the most empty environment that I've ever seen them make. Like I didn't it was see the it. most boring design-wise. Like nothing about it was well done. Like with the actual, I mean, like well, okay, they work on a level of like the animation, the designs. They're all good like that. But just the actual atmosphere of the movie and, like, the way the town was. Oh, like everything. the environment art? Well, just the world that it takes place in was the most boring thing. And it wasn't like that her stuff was, like, a huge contrast to it. Like, her ability to, like, freeze and whatever. Like, that yeah. wasn't a big enough contrast. It just wasn't exciting in that way. But, like, there was nothing that stood out to me except for the little snowman guy. Like, the little snowman guy stands out because everything else was so, like, it felt, like, restrained in the boringness. I was like, eh. Eh. <laughs> yeah, so, there you go. It's a legitimate argument. It wasn't, like, too crazy, like, compared to everything else they'd done. Like, it's, I think it was successful because of the music and because of, like, I don't know, just feeling of the movie rather than the look and design. I mean, it's also okay to like things that everybody hates, too, on the opposite side of the argument. Like, tons of people hated The Princess and the Frog. I loved it. I thought it was an awesome, like, different way to approach that tired Disney concept. And I loved the villain. I loved the art style. 
I love the backgrounds. I love the setting. I was like, oh, this is way different than anything they've done. But everybody else hated it because it was way different than anything they've done. But, I mean, you're never going to agree with everybody. You just have to be okay with that. And it's weird how it's like a time where... Guys, when I was talking to Miles, I kind of like mentioned this about like that whole greatest hits thing. Yeah. Like that everybody only knows the greatest hits of the internet and stuff. Like people don't like... Like this is going to sound really lame. But it's like how people way back could like go to like a record store and like find an old tape and like they could just like that thing and be the only person who liked it Mm -hmm. that doesn't really exist anymore right most people just like the same general thing that everybody else likes right i know that it was always like that because of tv and stuff but it's like more so now because it's so much saturation online and everybody's online all the time on their phones and stuff so it's like everybody sees the same things well, plus there's entire websites that people go to every day that are pretty much dedicated to what you should like. For f- fucking Facebook has a trending bar now. Yeah, like, like BuzzFeed and For all God's that sake. But, like, you can't go... I don't know. I mean, I guess there are certain places for it. Like, Tumblr, there's a lot of, like, original content on there. Yeah. And um, there's, you know, like... Obviously, like, you can find people on YouTube who make, like, funny stuff or whatever that aren't really well-known. But, I don't know, there's not that, like, there's not that thing anymore of, like, just finding something and having it be, like, your thing. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you can't just find, like... It's like that tape that Kim found that we were listening to last week that was amazing. That nobody knows about. No one knows about it. And it was so... And no one's ever going to know about it because that time has passed. <laughs> and it was so good. It was like a perfect thing that I never would have known about if someone hadn't picked up a tape cassette at the right time. Right. And it's like you wouldn't know about it ever online because why would anybody bring Yeah, because that's never going to come back. The time for that's gone. It didn't make like any kind of wave when it came out. So it's faded away, and now it's never gonna. No one's ever gonna know about it again. Yeah, it's weird. I don't even know what I was originally talking about. Why did I say that stuff? Dan does know about it because Dan was here when we listened to it. <laughs> uh, you were just talking about how like people, you know, it's okay to like things differently than other people because everything's become like really standardized on the internet. And, like, you know, people don't even know what they like now because pretty much everything's telling you what to like. Yeah, that's what I was going to lead to, is that I feel like this that's a huge problem with, like... It's a... Like, CD Hub concept art, all the video games that come out, all that stuff is, like... It's, it's like, you're filtering everybody's, like... Yeah. ...to the super narrow degree of, like, everybody's seen this... And you don't really see anything else on the peripherals. Like, you don't get to see, like... Like, when I used to go into a comic shop when I was a little kid, there was no difference to me between the best comic they had and the worst. Right. Because they were in a bin. And I would look through the bin, and sure, I'd find Ghost Rider, and I'd find this other thing, but then I'd also find, like, Bloodlines. And I was like, what the fuck is this? Right. You know what I mean? Like there were there was a place, there were things that you could go through where you would have to see stuff that like wasn't super common because it was in between and surrounded by popular stuff too. Like that's what I mean by like record stores and shit. Is it like that kind of thing is gone? Like they're not they're not in the same arena anymore. There's no one place where you see all of it. Everything right. is if it's the best, if it has the most views, it's on the front page. And then because because it's on the front page, more people click it, which gives it more views, which then leads people to go look at all the views it has. It must be the best. So it becomes this reinforcing infinity loop that defines it as a false positive. Because the second something gets a daily deviation, more people see it because it's the daily deviation. So then people look at the views without factoring in that it was a daily deviation. And they go, look at all the views it has. It must be great. And then it perpetuates and perpetuates and snowballs. And that's good for the individual and that's great for the piece of art but it's bad for public perception 
Yeah, because it's like I have so many things that like I grew up with that I know nobody knows about it because like my dad went to the video store and there wasn't a thing that said like here's the rating for everything in the store. Right. That didn't exist. There wasn't a meta score, you know, like a Metacritic meta score for everything. Like there wasn't a five star Amazon. There wasn't any of this shit. So my dad would just go through and pick stuff up. That's how I found the Guyver movies. When I yeah, was right. That's how I found, you know, that's how I played the game Captain Power. That's, that's why I watched the movie Rad, like, all the time. Like, that's why I had so many old books that were just, like, random things that I was just like, well, that's a cool cover. I don't know if it's good or not. Let's give it a shot. Right. And I get influenced by all of these things that nobody else has seen for the most part, not the general people. So it's like all of those things spark my like interest because I see them and I'm curious and they're there for me to see. And then I get to enjoy it and whatever. But uh, yeah, it's like that doesn't exist anymore. So now you only have people, unless you really try, seeing the same things as everybody else and getting influenced by the same things as everybody else. Which leads to more people copying it, which leads to everything becoming bland, which leads to what Style said in the chat, which is everybody painting an apple, apple butt girl because everybody's painting an apple butt girl. Yeah, it's like, there's no... Like, uh, since I moved out to Colorado, I'm like feeling this even more, where like there's all these restaurants and stuff that I've seen everywhere around the country. There's no, like, mom and pop's places out here for the most part. Yeah. There's no individuality about this place that I haven't really seen it. So it's like, there's no, in that same way, there's no, um, like, personality. There's nothing that defines it for me as that place. Whereas, where me and Dan grew up, like, around, like, Plymouth, Massachusetts, and if there's Europeans in here, then you guys all have defining characteristics about, like, everywhere you live. Yeah, because it's so old. Yeah, but, like, out here, there's just the same shit all the time. Like, strip mall, strip mall, strip mall. Get understand, like, the place... Like, the place Dave's living... This, is, this might be hard for people to wrap their heads around if they're from outside of the States, but the place Dave's living right now is less than 200 years old. The specific city he's living in that's there as it exists now is probably less than 100 years old. So the only stuff that's there is the same stuff that's everywhere else. Yeah, it's so really like it's, weird to think about that. Like it's weird that you can't like um, like where like where we come from and in like the Plymouth area, there's everything there is old. It's old as you know it's gonna get in this country, which is about three hundred years old. And there's still tons of like things about it that define it as that place. So, like it has characteristics and things that you can say like, oh, there's that thing out there that has some sort of value yeah. outside of it being good to eat at. The reason I say 300 is because all the Native American stuff was destroyed because it was made out of wood and it didn't last the test of time, aside from carvings here and there. And all the first village stuff that the pilgrims built was destroyed and reused. So the only stuff here that's still here was like 1700s forward, like forts and things that people built in the woods, and that's really it. But it's crazy because, like, I don't know, like, the, the thing that I was going to get at was that there's no more of that. Like, I'm not coming from Plymouth anymore. I'm from the world. Right. Like, it's gone that you're defined by your place for the most part, especially if you're one of the people that's always online. It's like you are a part of the world and it's like you're melding all of the people into this one group this one like neighborhood and it's like you don't have that same thing like like they'll fight it they'll fight it because in Plymouth you know people will still say like you know they'll use the word fag oh yeah as an insult but it's like a joking thing with all of your friends and it doesn't mean gay and even gay people say it. Yep, all the time here. So it's like, like there are things like that everywhere, and there will always be that, but then there will be places like in California where they're totally against that. But, like, that'll go away. 
And it's weird to think that, you know what I mean? Like, the, the things that made you an individual were the things that made, like, everybody in that town kind of a similar individual. Yeah, what we're saying is, like, so you were all part of, like, a team, and then you moved out into the world, and then you had these clashes, and you grew from that, and you had, like, different influences, and you came from a place that made you different than every other part of the world. Right. Basically. So what we're saying is, like, J-Mob in the chat said, so what you're saying is stuff was better and had better nuggets of goodness back then, so we should go back in history as much as possible. It's not what we're saying. What we're saying is it's way harder to be an individual now than it was 20, 30 years ago because yeah. there's a shared experience that everyone has for the most part, and that's the Internet. And the Internet is primarily three or four sites that we all go on to every single day that share the same things on all four of those sites. If something's trending on Facebook, it's trending on Twitter. If it's trending on Twitter, it's probably all over Tumblr. If it's on those three, it's probably on Reddit. And everybody who has an internet connection visits one of those for the most part, primarily. So everybody has the same opinion of what's going on as everybody else in the world. Whereas 30 years ago, you had a few people that saw the same things you did because you lived in a town of maybe 3,000 people. Now you're living in a town on the internet that's about, you know, 30 million, 300 million people. Maybe more than that, you know? So being an individual is way harder because everybody's getting streamlined the same few pockets of information. That's why a couple weeks ago, everybody was saying that they should cancel Stephen Colbert's show because a few people misunderstood a joke out of context, they tweeted about it, people didn't go watch the show to get their own context because they trusted those people's opinion, shared it, it started to trend, it went global, and then everybody wasn't doing their own research. They were trusting the internet's opinion because blindly you want to think, oh, if that many people are saying this, then it has to be true, because otherwise why would they be saying it? And nobody knew what they were talking about. And that happens all the time, all the time with so many things, even visual art, where things can explode in popularity overnight and nobody knows why. And you get into them for the wrong reasons. You support them for the wrong reasons. Or you just do them because... Or you just do them because you're seeing it. I mean, like, because that's the thing is that, like, certain places should have certain reactions to certain things because they primarily relate to where you are in the world or whatever else. Right. And that doesn't happen as much anymore because it's like, you know, it, it's like you're de like it's defeating the purpose of a vote, for instance. Like imagine if votes weren't protected like but you didn't know who everybody voted for. So you'd have your own opinion, you'd have to. That's why it's there. That's right. why the anonymity is there. So you can go in with your real opinion of what you really think about these people and then vote for them. What the internet does is it takes that vote for everything in your life and makes it public so that you see that everybody's going down that road. They all like that thing so that you just get on board because it's what you think is like a safe thing where you're not just having your own unique kind of perspective on it. Right. I mean... It's at the point where trying to be an individual is streamlined. It's just like, like Dan said, like the Brooklyn argument. Trying to break away from the norm in and of itself has become a norm unto its own where everybody falls under the blanket term of hipster. Yeah. It, and they all look the same and they all dress the same. So this whole movement based on being an individual isn't even individuality anymore because of internet community. You know, it's like... It, that's that's all we're trying to say is like it's really hard to be an individual when everybody gets the same stuff from the same few things every single day. Yeah, like people used to not dress the same. Like you could leave you could leave a town and go somewhere else, people be totally a certain way because the only thing you get influenced by is your immediate area, your friends, wherever you grew up, like that's your influence and then stuff that's on T V. Yeah. So you take whatever that influence was from TV and then you put it through your filter. And then in the same way that stuff spreads online, it spreads in your town. So right. it's like among your friends and stuff. So it's like you have this, you know, take on whatever those things are in your own group. 
But then you leave and you go somewhere else and they might have had a different take on that thing. And that influences you in a different way. Or you see that something could have been done better. Or whatever else. But there's like so many things like that that are just gone now. For anyone who's lost the point, the whole reason we got onto this is because, you know, why do people like what they like? Is it okay to not like something that everyone else seems to like? Is it okay to have a different opinion? And is it okay to be cynical if everybody likes something and you don't? Yes, for all the reasons we just discussed. Because everybody's going to like the same thing now. Because everybody has a shared internet experience that's reinforcing the things that are liked. Like, that, it, that's the full circle of how we got onto this. Is just, yes, it's okay. If you like something that other people don't like, it's fine. If you don't like something that everybody else likes, it's fine. I mean, really, I think the healthiest thing you could do is... Stop caring about the internet. Well, yeah, stop caring about the internet, but don't go on... Don't go online. Like, just, just yeah, stay do the things that you like and go for them all the way and learn. And I mean, like, I, like, I think that... Uh, I mean, for me personally, like, the best thing... It's, it's helped me the most is like reading books like just seriously like reading books and taking in like worlds and stuff like that because everybody's too lazy to read books there's so much in them though that you can take from and borrow from and nobody will ever know you did that mm-hmm. it's like there's so many things you can learn and just like you know grow from and grow creatively from like it's it's so it's such an easy resource that like nobody's using like just find books <laughs> and read like find an author you like and then read all their books yeah just like try and take it in and see what you get from those because at least there's substance there and if they can write a book and be recognized for it then they're probably intelligent <laughs> yeah and here's another thing to consider like it's uh, in the chat said, I think if everybody gets exactly the same information, it breeds real individuals because you can build your personality without having other starting conditions. That's not the point we're making. The point we're making is your perspective on the information. Somebody who learns something in a town where they grow up in the woods and play outside every day versus someone who learns that same information in a city where they have to stay indoors all the time, their point of view on the same information is going to be vastly different. That's all we're saying. Yeah. Yeah. But because everybody, because of the idea of trending now, where the opinion's already been made for you and you're just sharing the same thing a million other people are sharing, that's gone. Your personal perspective on the issue's gone. Because you're already having the opinion handed to you by a whole group of people that are telling you you have to think that way. Or you have to paint this way. Or you have to present your work this way. Or this is what's going to make you popular. Or this is the right opinion to have. Like... Your part of the equation is gone. That's all we're saying. Whereas, you know, when we were growing up, because I guess we're old as shit now, you could kind of make up your own mind because when you learned something, it was just, oh, and then you went outside and you were alone all day pretty much or with your friends. Yeah, like I, I learned, like, like so many of the things I like, people say are shit. Yeah. Like so much of it, like, like I remember growing up watching, like, strictly all of the shitty Van Damme movies, like, all the side ones. Like, like all the ones that would have just said Van Damme on the box. Yeah. It's like, I watched all of those. I probably loved all of them. And I didn't know that they were bad. Right. Because they weren't. But now, like, if Rotten Tomatoes had existed back then, or, like, if a movie came out and I saw how everybody was talking about it on Facebook, I might not have gone to see it. In the right. same way, I don't go to see movies now because of those things. Yeah, and movies that are really good movies get panned and uh, bombed because of that now. And it's like, you know, sometimes a couple of years later, people are like, oh, you know what, that was actually a pretty, pretty good movie. But it's like, but you don't get to see the movie and then take away from it the things that you like. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there are certain moments in things. Like, I won't like everything about it, right. but like a moment in it. And if everybody says that movie's shit, nobody goes to see it, I miss my opportunity to see that moment. And maybe that moment is something that I use. Like, for instance, here's something I used recently. This movie sucks, okay? 
is called Lost in Space. Mm -hmm. It's the worst. There's one scene in that movie that's cool, and it's when his helmet slides down his face. And it's and cool I enough. That. It's cool enough to validate the movie. I stole that and I yep. put it in my Starville comic, and it's animated. <laughs> and like that's what I'm talking about. That kind of stuff comes back to you later on. And if you don't have the opportunity, and you're actually like told not to see these things, then it's an opportunity lost, like something that could just be yours. You could own that moment. Yep. Yep. That's all I'm saying. It's a very valid point. Lost in Space was a movie that was entirely about that one helmet. <laughs> it was. That's all the that. The entire movie was just a Parthenon built around that helmet. Yeah, that's what the friends acted. Mm. Jeff. Well, I'm going to get off of here and do some painting, but it was nice to have a good uh, talk about something we got frustrated about like we used to. Yeah. Uh, always enjoy drinking coffee and getting frustrated with Dave on here. So I'll uh, I'll save this in case anybody wants to listen back because I usually... <laughs> You just heard all of that back and forth is analyzing things and it's coming up with ideas about things and it's you're saying it out loud and you're being critical on it and you're going to use that later on in whatever you create. Yep. That's why we talk like this. That's why we think this stuff's important is to just like brainstorm why we don't like things. And we do this almost every day. Yeah. About something. Helps so much. It really does. It helps get, it literally helps get your brain going. It's like a weird workout. It's like a thinking exercise. Um, but yeah. So good having you guys here. I'll be on later tonight. I'm not sure when, but I will be on later tonight. Uh, I'm going to go shave my head because it's getting really hot here. So I'll see you guys.